Chasing the Racing. Powered by Colchester Kawasaki. Part of the Global Moto Group, we supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles. Three, two, one, and welcome back to Chasing the Racing, episode 160. And we're delighted to be joined by Matt Stevenson and Stephen Parsons. How's it going, lads? Not so bad, aye. Not so bad. I tell you what, first of all, thank you so much, because my geography is shite. (laughs) I generally thought you lived just down the road and right next to each other so <laughs> which is horrendously wrong so thank you so much for traveling all the way so where where have you come from uh morecambe now that's where we're from we are just yeah how on f- god's green earth did you end up in morecambe um well i'm from just outside kendall so we've done that which, <laughs> right uh yeah lived there most of my life and then obviously kendall's a bit expensive Markham's cheap as chips <laughs> for obviously <laughs> obvious reasons so yeah we did that and we got house in yeah Markham, so Okay, but hold on, hold on. Now this is where I got a little bit confused because Matt, you're from Ripon. Yeah, yeah. And how far is that from here? Hour and twenty. An hour and twenty. Yeah. Even I thought it was a bit closer, so I do apologise, yeah, Chrissy, about my geography. It's well out the window. It's and well out the window. We've literally all just got back from the Element TT, so like within, uh, I've literally just. Uh, pulled up on the drive quickly unloaded everything in the trailer and got it set up for the studio just said a quick hello to the family but uh, obviously this is going to be a bit of a sort of TT review and um, I the feel like the TT review the TT review the yeah. and <laughs> all the grit involved first of all I'd just like to start by saying uh, I was over there watching and I absolutely take my hat off to all three of you and all the other competitors I think you you put on one hell of a show um, it was um, yeah inc- incredible to be there and watch and uh, yeah I f- massively admire you all so I uh, but I think go on you it's uh, this is kind of your I was your about thing. to say this has been this has been like a bit of a wet dream for me coming through here <laughs> I've, been, I've been now obviously the people going why have it like what the hell like I have bigged you two up so much over the collection of years you know what I mean you two are like a power couple. It's meant because you're like being like rivals for you. That that sounded a bit weird. That though. like obviously I thought they were together, but not together. Blatantly not. One's in Morecambe, one's in Ripon. This has gone a bit weird. There you go. But um, no. To be honest, I actually don't know your stories, but I've always seen you at the like at the race and for years. You know, you've both been Manx Grand Prix competitors, and your story you've got such an in depth around it, and I barely feel like I've got to know you. So all I know is. You're a laugh a minute, and if this doesn't come across in here, I'm, get, I'm going to sack myself <laughs> off the old show. So there you go. There's no pressure, no pressure. But like, like I think it's a bit of a flip of a coin. Who wants to go first? I think we're going to have to go down the avenue of how you got on the bikes and where did the mu- for our audio on, listeners, mate. there's a talking mullet <laughs> <laughs> opposite me, which is Matt Stevenson. So by default, you're going to go first, Matt. Me and Trevor, uh, we met. Uh, where was it, Anglesey? I think 2016. Was it 15? Yeah, uh, sometime around there, wasn't it? From the spot around. Yeah, yeah. We're I just... just parked up and then he just sort of said, I was like, can there's anyone in anyone in this place? I was like, no, no, he said in, got talking, had a bit of a laugh, and then just been looking like sort of love at first sight, really. Because <laughs> I'm not thinking, no, no, because obviously, like, for our audio listeners now, it's like you, you're both, like, similar height, you're laughing at each other's shit crack, it's outstanding, <laughs> you know what I mean? You'd think, you're fa- honestly, you would think you two are family. The first time I met you, it was, you know what I mean? Sim- similar-ish accent kind of thing. and But, like, so... There must be a huge story before you met in Anglesey then. So let's go down the let's go down the rabbit hole, Matt. Uh I'd bumped into him at Croft, but I didn't realise like the like we Lee, uh, Lee Wilson and whatnot for always on like top from top couple uh, top couple of roads weren't there, Lee Will mm. um and then it was always like a lad with a long neck that was down there as well. But I never knew I was like five five rows back, so you just sort of looking at all superstars up front. And then uh, and then it was the yeah, like I think it was that year, wasn't it? When I bumped into you at Anglesey. Would have um, been the same year because that been year after. Was... First year on big bikes, so it'd be his first year that we yeah. rode on the same class because mm. I was on Triumph before that. Now, on, I'm I'm just having a flashback to like the old all the days. So it was like blue and white levers with like a chicken AGV lid. No, the Akito, <laughs> like bright orange, like a luminous orange, luminous blue, and like bright white. And that was your well, first the, season's the race. Like that for long. <laughs> I just got them off my dad's mate for hundred quid, <laughs> and just got a two thousand one hour one that we bought in a lot of bits from a shed fifteen hundred quid. Did, did you both start racing uh, like sort of later on in you, like didn't you were twenty one yeah. thing twenty one and uh, probably nineteen twenty something like that. It was pretty much when I started work. 
Uh, Started earning a bit of cash, but uh, how can we spend it? I thought you meant like 19, <laughs> yeah, 20. No, no. I'm thinking pretty hell. No. <laughs> no, no. Dur- during the war. <laughs> but uh, no, it's, uh, so if it's similar to Dom, I guess, in terms of like not really through the um, the youth classes and stuff, yeah, yeah. like sort of got a job and decided to go racing yourselves off your own yeah. back sort of thing. I was still like just, just out of an apprenticeship wedge, so I could only, the first weekend I did with, uh, with North East Club at Croft, I could only afford to do the Saturday. I like went to my transponder and she was like, you're not racing tomorrow. I was like, I don't have any money. <laughs> it's not happening sort of thing. So yeah, that's how, yeah, just on power on tyres and just went from there really. Like oh, what about track days before? But We're trying to scratch at the I've surface not, I've here. not done a track day at Croft. I just rocked up and did qualifying. And then so I managed to win my first race in power bikes by like 10 seconds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then I went out into, in, in, in like the, not power bikes, sorry, thunder bikes. And then I went out in power bikes, which is like the oh, thousand CC class. Uh, thinking I was going to be next Valentino Rossi because I'd won my first race and did about two laps and did a massive high side <laughs> and mangled myself a bit, but yeah. I that, thought this that, is the sport for me. Yeah, and then after that, I was like, <laughs> I love this. A win in a massive crash, crowd plays a tall crowd wants to see in it, a good win in a good crash. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like, like, what got it? Like, and did you do any track days before that? Yeah, I'd done, I done one, uh, one, one track day at Cadwell and one at Teesside Autodrome. And then I was like, I'm going to start racing. <laughs> Because I went to Teesside and I'd never been there and I lapped everyone in my group and like for three laps I was like, I can't be half bad, maybe we're for, we're for bash it, like, having a, you know, have a good racing really, see how we go. And he went straight in and thought, a thousand cc is the best yeah, way to do yeah, it. Yeah, it's a thousand, but it was, it was barely as fast as like a 600 really, if you know what I mean, 2001, I won it, one <laughs> quick. I bet at the time it felt quick, especially with the yeah, high yeah. side is under the moon. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> I was like 11th at the time as well, I was like a full grid, so I was, I was going all right. I was 31 my first time there, yeah, I was pretty happy with that. But was, he, and was your dad, like, what, what was your dad, because you, you and your dad are always going off racing together. Yeah, yeah. You're always like, you know, you're always there and helping each other out. So what was your, your dad's angle? Was it just you came home one day with a bit of a apprenticeship money and went, what are you doing this weekend, father? No, well, like, he, he, Teesside, fancy a giggle? You know, what's, what's he, the story there? He lent me the 1,500 quid to get my first back, so unless <laughs> I didn't have anything. And then I had the 250 or whatever, it was 270 for your entry, and that was, that was it, that was me skint again. So, yeah, I still owe him a lot of money now to be fair only seven years on but anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes did, and did you both uh, once you got into the say short circuit racing the Croft and that did you both go straight into the Manx and like road racing or did did you have a few years beforehand uh, what club racing yeah uh, yeah we did four four years club racing and did you both uh, go then, to the Manx at the same time uh, yeah no, pretty much because that was whenever it like say we met each other 16 wasn't it or whenever yeah. it was yeah so I did another year or two after that mm-hmm. did Scarborough's together didn't we we did the first round at Scarborough yeah, yeah obviously, got, like, obviously you've got a lot of money it takes a few years to get your licenses started you know you can't race every weekend so yeah. like his license for me took like a year mm-hmm. so it's, it takes a while to get them done and so Scott, was Scarborough your first taste of road racing yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I mean pretty much everybody in England does the same doesn't it it's, <laughs> it's a long way to Ireland isn't it? I still I've never been you've never been either have you have you? No, no. I want, it's always I've always wanted what, to you do haven't even? Uh, I'm always this year though, so I'll be how Kennedy. on God's green earth are you two the calibre anyway we're going to discuss this <laughs> in full later on wow yeah, so. a bit, bit of Scarborough over to the Manx yeah, did Scarborough, did that for, well, did that halfway through one year, didn't we, whenever it was, 20, 19, somewhere anyway. Uh, and then I did 700, and then we did Manx, and then, yeah, it's gone from there, really, and carried on, haven't we? But, yeah, first year at Manx was 17, wasn't it, yeah. Yeah, that was it. So, oh, like, so we know his story about the apprenticeship crack, went to Teesside, spanked everyone, got the winner's trophy at a track day, that old classic line, <laughs> there we go. So how about yourself, pre Matt Stevenson, what we, what was your story then? Uh, well, we just got old Triumph. So we did. I always wanted to go racing. Dad's done a bit of racing, club racing, so ah, he right. knows what crack is. And yeah, I say you just sort of guided us and that lot if you would. But yeah, we did that. Did a track day at Cadwell, and it got called off because it was snowing halfway through. And then went <laughs> Derby Phoenix. Did newcomer show at Derby Phoenix, and yeah, I got lapped by everybody. Mine wasn't a heroic story. Mine was at the back getting lapped by everybody. And yeah, absolutely rubbish, really. But yeah, did that and just progressed through a year. And by the end of the year, I was fighting for the podium for Derby Phoenix. So yeah, just each time I just went from, like I say, last. I think Snetterton was the first ever round. That was uh, Stone Dead last. And just everybody just went, see you later. And I was like, oh, damn, I'm a bit slow here. And then, yeah, next round, we were like 15th. Next round, we got like 10th. Next round, we were like 5th. And then, yeah, we were back for podium. So. What, what were you doing between there and then? Were you, like, just on the phone to Rossi? Or, like, what was that? You know what I mean? What, <laughs> I just, just, just build it up, don't you? Yeah, I don't know. I just, I've always built it up. You're pretty good at just going out there and 
cracking on, aren't you? I seem to be, uh, yeah. Yeah, which is, track and... like, yeah, if we go to a new track, you're always faster, aren't you, to start with? I seem to be near my limit quite quick. Yeah, and then... Quite... Gas a couple of times. <laughs> well... Which is annoying, it's like, I don't know, you go to a track and then it's like, yeah, not a bad lap time, and then for the rest of the weekend, it's like, I've only done two sessions, did that lap time, and then rest of, you know, four races, you know, I'm going to be only knocking another second off. It's like, where did that all that come from at the beginning? Why can't I keep that momentum going? I just seem to click really quick with it, and then... Is that, is that the same now kind of thing, do you think, or...? I just, well, maybe, I don't know, yeah. I did a 20, 120.970 uh, at Manx in 2018. I didn't get nowhere near that on my 600 this year at, my, at TT. Wow. Which okay. is weird, isn't it? I'll tell you what, that's going to be one of the hot, like main talking points that we're going to all go through a bit, like how only some people have improved and then people not, haven't done this and haven't done that. Not many people improved. No, it was it's, not, it's yeah. been a weird, it's it, been, a, uh, yeah. it's been, I don't know why and we're going to discuss it like a big therapy yeah. group may have a hug at the end of it. I don't know. <laughs> just, <laughs> obviously, well, 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 <laughs> just, just before we get on to talking about this year's TT, uh, do you know when you both decided to do the Manx on the same mm. year, was that, were you kind of in, both kind of like agreed to do it together and what was, on the show, we end up talking to loads of people that have done the TT and we we'll always talk about like the preparation and stuff that goes in. And obviously, if you go straight at the TT, there's quite a lot of support in terms of going out and sit, you know, laps in cars and all that sort of stuff. Uh, what sort of support do you get when you uh, decide to do the Manx? And what um, what did you do to prepare? Should we go first, Jeff? We can do. Uh, well, I don't know. We just, I've always wanted to do Isle of Man. That's the main one. That was, yeah, that was the like, pinnacle, in it? And yeah. that's what we've always looked for. And again, we just... Was got... that from your, your father kind of thing or was uh, that kind of just a... Not really, just right? well watching it on telly pretty much. I remember yeah. DJ on BMM Yamaha, that yellow thing, whatever it was. Yeah. Remember watching that on VHS, whatever year TT it was. VHS, oh yeah, yeah well, back, Yeah, back when I was, yeah. <laughs> back when I was a youngster. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, just did that, watched it. I thought, yeah, that's, that's a hellish thing, isn't it? And just watching that and then... We did go over a couple of times when I was 16, 17, when I had a little moped and that lot. Me and my mates, yeah, went over, watched it a couple of times. And then, yeah, you just, once you've watched it, it's... And in terms of, so, like, before your actual first, like, uh, flying laps, if you like, yeah. did you, um, like, a lot of people, like, use the PlayStation, watch loads on board laps on YouTube, go over and hire cars. Did you do much? Uh, yeah, we did a bit. I've Well, for about a year before we put my entry in and that yeah. lot, before I actually did it, we just watched every brew time at work. I just go in, sit on me, uh, have it on my phone, watch it whilst I ate my dinner and that lot. Did a lap or two, and just did that pretty much solid for a year because everybody at work used to rip me like mad. Really? It's like, what are you doing? That? What are you doing? Do you know before you went down Bray Hill for the first time? Could you like say close your eyes and do a full lap in your head, like you knew where? All yeah, the that's that's where I wanted. <laughs> you might be a bit different, but uh, yeah, that's what I wanted because I. Last thing you want is to be going somewhere into a corner yeah. thinking... Um, like, before your first lap in anger, could you not tell us which <laughs> way it goes? Yeah, it didn't really work like that for me. So I, I, knew, <laughs> I, knew, where, I knew I knew where I was going, so I wanted to set off, but I couldn't just close my eyes and do a lap, like, laid in bed and think about it. I just, really? I don't know why it didn't work like Get that. Lost. But now, no, like, like I knew I was going to come into a corner and the next one was going to... Can you do that now, by the yeah, way? Yeah, yeah. It can reveal itself now, yeah, yeah. What, what about your prep? So you're doing it at, like, break time in work. What, what about your prep? What were you thinking? Yeah, we did, like... Well, I, as deft as it sounds, I did Oliver's Mountain in 2016, and that's where my mate Dobbin, uh, Russell Dodds, he was like, he was the first person to sort of said, um, you know, do you want to do it at Manx? And I'd heard of it, but I didn't really know really what. Like, I didn't really know. I knew it was something to do with Isle of Man and like a, a newcomer sort of TT and whatnot, and he sort of explained it. And I was like, man, we'll have a bash. And then there was like five of us said we were going to do it, and then only two of us turned up like people do. But <laughs> anyway, um, and then, yeah, sort of from there, put an entry and whatever else, and then for like a year and a half ish. So about a year, like Trev, I just watch videos. Do you know, uh, you do. financially, like say someone thinking about going over and doing the Manx, obviously you've got your time off work and mm. if you sort of pay people to come and help you, that sort of thing. But taking that out of the equation, what, and you've already got your bikes, yeah, what yeah. sort of um, running costs, like how much money would you actually need <laughs> to go and do your, your first Manx? The for, f what? First year cost me three and a half grand. Three and a half grand, yeah. For, yeah. for how long? What's the period of like what off work or yeah, is it yeah it's like two and a half weeks in it two and, and half weeks, yeah. two and a half weeks three and a half what yeah. did you think it was going to cost you <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what I mean like, that's, that's sort of all I'd saved up so that's what it was going to cost yeah, in a way yeah yeah three and a half yeah, that's yeah, it yeah. and was that was that about sort of um, 
Did you say three and a half grand? Three and a half grand, yeah. Was yeah. that like sort of a uh, thousand and a half on the race and then two grand in the courthouse? No, no, no. <laughs> Not quite. More like three grand but, in the courthouse. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, for our listeners, I don't know what the courthouse is. That's a, that's a nightclub in the Isle of Man. Not there, he's off the jail. Just uh, clearing that one up <laughs> yeah. for everyone on that side of things. <laughs> but what, what about, hold on, what, what do you do for a living, Matt? I'm um, a pipe layer. So, hot pipes. I was waiting for the euphemism here. <laughs> there, <laughs> you're, you're, you're a good-looking lad, so I'm thinking, here we go. No wonder he's getting the money in. A pipe, a pipe, oh, how a pipe. Layer. Fresh water pipes layer for Ken Rodney Construction, who's one of my sponsors now. So, big thanks to them. Correct. See, smooth Fresh put water. in there, very good. How, what about you then? Uh, I'm a Land Rover mechanic. Oh, Jaguar Land Rover has been now called, but yeah, did that. Did they sponsor you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Work hard. Hard. Work hard. Hard. Well, yeah, the bit. Well. They've been spot on for the last couple of years and I love it. Left school, worked there, did my apprenticeship there. And then, yeah, we had a year out because I moved next to, into Ripon and that lot, which is probably why How, I say. Why, so why did you move to Ripon then? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm trying to clip Kendall to <laughs> Morecambe. Like, that's kind, of, kind of jumped to the east there, mate. Uh, well, like so we always got along. And then girlfriend Lucy, she lived in Ripon as well. Oh, b Dale, that's where she's from. Yeah. So I uh, sort of did that, and then I, to be fair, I was sick of working for Land Rover, which is hindsight's a good thing, isn't it? Because <laughs> like I say, I'm back there working there now. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I did that, got a job fabricating because Dad's a steel fabricator. So I've always obviously messed around welding and yeah, yeah. Fab- just fabricating shit and yeah, doing that lot. And there's a job yeah over in Ripon, so we got that, moved over, and yeah, did that. And that didn't really last that long, did it? It only lasted about a year, and then I was back. Like I said, we moved back over and. Yeah, back at Land Rover. Grab the lady, we're off. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you listen to the podcast very often, but for, for it must be months you've been trying to oh, uh, like uh, mention uh, and uh, getting Stephen on. And um, obviously, the, um, there's a, a story to that as well. Do you want to sort of elaborate on that? Well, he, well, he, he, he wrecks hotel rooms and he's single handedly kicked cancer in the arse. So, like, you know what I mean? There's definitely a story in either one. I don't know which one's going to be. There you go. So yeah, yeah, I've been a bit, a bit a, off air as well. Dom's mentioned it loads of times. Like, what you've kind of been through and done is like I, very inspirational. I tell, like, but the thing is, it's, it's not even, you know, we've got to talk about, you know, these lads have what you've. Let's talk about the Manx Grand Prix a little bit more because, like, before we go down that avenue, you know, yeah. we're, we're still building up the story on that side of things. But, <laughs> we'll no, but so the pair of you, where you're both podium finishers, guaranteed podium finishers, have you you've won one, Matt? I won a senior in 18, yeah. Yeah. I was second year, yeah. On your second year yeah, around yeah. there, who that was, is hellish. Who were you sort of battling with? True. <laughs> was it? <laughs> five, and <laughs> five and a half seconds in it. The DL. Yeah, yeah. And what sort of lap speeds were you? I did. That's when I did a one twenty point nine seven zero on a six hundred. Yeah, on a two hundred twenty five horsepower one. Yeah. So that's yeah. you know, and that's the Tommy Club kind of. Thing. So yeah, what yeah. was your lap speed at that point then? Uh, at that one, I don't think I did one hundred ninety nine because I just didn't do it, did I? I was oh. just constantly all the way through. You did. Well, you had a bit of miss out, didn't you? Because you got your penalty and pit stop. But mm. I think somebody said it changed about 10 times, didn't it? Did it lead between yeah, me yeah. and you? I think, yeah, literally. Did you have pit boards out, Paul? I didn't on the second one because in junior, it, uh, <laughs> I was leading the junior on the second lap. In, uh, well, when I crashed, it was probably near 20 seconds. But it, I came out on Goosenack and it was like P1 plus 17. But they had Trevor written on the, on the pit board. I was like, do they mean Trevor or do they mean me? I was like, they must mean Trevor. And I was like, well, I better push on in case it's me. Because then I can, if I push on now, I can win it by a minute car. Why do you need to race, ruin a race by a minute? So only I got to Craig and broke about 200 metres too late. Bam. So that was the end of that race. Shit. And then they're all telling me, oh, you, you were leading by 20 seconds inside junior lap record. <laughs> so yeah, thanks. I've crashed now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so is yeah. that it for the pit boards? You don't want to see Yeah, I just, I, they're not my cup. It's, I've never had one in racing before and it just it just put me out of my rhythm. If yeah. I hadn't seen that, I'd, I'd have finished. Well, not easy, but I'd have been comfortable and just gone around. I was riding. I didn't, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you were like, yeah, you pit boards. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, so like, Jesus wept so on that in your fit. Let's talk about your first year. Where did you first finish in your first Manx for the pair of you? Uh, I finished remember? third in newcomers and I think 15th or something in seen, uh, junior because we both did junior, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. So, so in the junior, it's a 600 race. In the senior, you can run up to 750, yeah. Yeah, yeah. can't you? That, that's the Manx Grand Prix, but you can't. Yeah. So a lot of people run the 600s in both races. Yeah, Not many people both. actually transfer their bikes, do they? So yeah. the pair of you were on both six. Both yeah, yeah. Hold on, R6, you've been a Yamaha man. Uh, were you on a Kawasaki? Yeah, Zaki? Kawasaki, same one that I'm riding now, just, yeah. Right. A bit older, but yeah, we did that because it's a bit weird, isn't it, Manx? Because you're only allowed to do two races. Oh, you, if you do your newcomers, you do your newcomers, and you do either the junior or the senior, you're not allowed to do both for whatever reason, so. Right, of course you're not. Mm. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the reasoning behind that was, but mm. 
that's what it is and that's what we did so there was no point waiting all week for the senior at Ando week you might as well bloody hell so I you, suppose there'd just be too many entries wouldn't there because I was like number 96 or something daft, be, yeah, that, yeah and that possibly is the reason I was, I was number 96 <laughs> Jesus what? Yeah. So, so you finished 15th in your first like you know non-newcomers yeah, so, what, yeah, what about you uh, newcomers I was 7th I think and then um, junior I was 28th 27, 27th 28th so I was like, happy with that yeah but they're just like the amount of times I drilled it into you just ride around don't push mm. do this so I just literally just rode around like not treating it as if it was wet but as if there was a lot of damp patches say you know what I mean I was just very chilled out and then obviously next year I didn't follow that idea of crash but, you <laughs> no, know. no but so like like you say the thing is you both you know you, are you both living and ripping at this point the pair of you kind of thing? Uh, 17 I don't think we were were we no. so you've moved home Oh, well, you had to move. Home, I, was still, yeah. I was still doing, yeah, spanner in and uh, right. and all that. Right, got uh, you. Yeah, year after, wasn't it? Was it, was it 19, I think, you come to Ripon, maybe? I don't know. Oh, I'm bad with it. Yeah. Dyslexic. Yeah. There you go. See, the, the mad thing is, though, like, a lot of, like, a lot of mate, like, we all, we're, like, more mates, really, you know, in the racing paddock kind yeah, of yeah. thing, but yeah. you two are proper, like, you ring each other, you have the crack, going out having a drink. That rival like that is class you know yeah. what were you saying to each other after your first year going into the second where you're both we, and banging I, heads we never thought we were going to do like, you know yeah. that well did we we just thought i thought Trevor would be top 10 i'll maybe be top 20 in like junior and senior yeah and was, like the first night of practice and we were like top five second night it was like and every night of practice it was having me in that were leading it was like me and him first to second we were like hmm. what's everyone doing there must be sandbagging it what, what are they messing about <laughs> yeah, well. second year eight, we can't be off this quick like what's no but it seems we're just like we're in the same morning we're just like we like how far like we were in 18 just... weren't we yeah second, bike. yeah second year people's bike helped us both out and right. again but yeah. First year, you were, they helped you as well, didn't they? Do you want, do you want to just yeah. give a shout out? I, I, I don't know what people's bike is, but people listening won't know. So, do you want to give, obviously, they've helped you both out. Do you want to give yeah, them yeah. a quick shout out and like explain? What's the story? Yeah. Yeah, what, what they do. Yeah. Uh, oh, go on, Trev. <laughs> You've been with them on at me. <laughs> um, they're just, yeah, you just pretty much it's people, anybody. And they do like packages where it's like you either buy a rear tyre for a race or a lap of fuel and you get your picture, little like passport size photo, and you put it on the side of the bike. That's pretty much what it is, just a bit, yeah, just doing that. And so it's basically crowdfunding, uh, yeah, pretty much and giving just, people like yourselves yeah, just, a chance to raise yeah, yeah. crowdfunding. And they do, they normally sponsor two people or whatever, don't they? Normally have two yeah, of you. Yeah. And again, they did never used to do Manx, but for whatever reason, I'm pure looking in timing. And they decided to do what they called the Rising Star Project, which they did that at the Manx. And they, that's they helped me first, well, they've helped me every year, the first, second, and third year at Manx. And they helped you second year, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was like the Rising Star project, which was, yeah, the future TT stars or whatever. They <coughs> and do they have a full it. team as well, or do you have to still take like mechanics and that sort of thing? Uh, you have some people that help you out. Bit of they? it, really, yeah. They've got, yeah. Like Tomo, yeah, who knows his stuff. Yeah, they have experience there. And again, there's like Janice that's, she does like alt charts and that lot, which is perfect for when you're a newcomer, because it's like, right, you need to be at briefing at two o'clock. Yeah, she'll Keeps be there. Right, yeah. yeah, she'll be like, right, you need to do that, don't they? Which is mm. all the admins. Like, yeah, all that lot, which is you have no idea how happy them two would be happy for a shout because every time Tomo sees me, he's like, better give me a shout out. So the <laughs> fact that you two have done it is I would start in there. It's, it's, it's Mark Cubbon that right, sort of owns it all and runs it all in a way, so he's, he's the main man, really. But you never really see he sort of sits back and just, you know, right. he doesn't take any sort of fame for it in a way. Good, yeah, he's, good people doing doing good mm, for the sport, and, and it, so yeah, he even helped me out this year to be fair. Paid for a lot of my fuel this year, so even though I had no people's bike stickers and out on bike, so yeah, big thanks to him again this year. Yeah, yeah. So like back back to the back to the nitty gritty of it, you know what I mean? So it's a bit like there's all we we take the piss on the show all the time. We call it the Rossi's Wall, you know. And every time we get like a couple of rock stars like yourselves on, we're like, you know, no, no, it's true though. You know what I mean? We end up going, you know, at what point do you stop sharing information? You know, when, when does this? There you two are proper mates. That's the thing. There ain't any information to share. <laughs> <laughs> Me and him are the only people I know that literally won't touch the suspension. They just go around the bike. Like I was talking to Crowy and that lot on the Saturday night. And uh, the ram were out with him, and he was like, you know what, you know what suspensions changes have you made and whatnot, and we were like, oh, same as it was at Croft in April. He was like, we're well, not done now. Like Dean Harrison, uh, Conrad was opposite us, so Dean were kicking about a lot. Yeah, sure. and I've been talking to him, and he said same thing. He was like, you know what have you changed? What have you done? I was like, change gearing. <laughs> like we just don't, because because like the help I get, obviously, is I'm very grateful for all my dad and my friends that come and help me, but none of us know enough really about suspension or bits and bats of geometry and that sort of care. But we don't really know enough to. No, we're taking a step in. Not that everyone knows they're taking a step in the right direction, but we're just going to tie us in or not, if that makes sense. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? So we just, we just sort of leave it alone. <laughs> and if it feels comfortable, it feels comfortable. So <laughs> to, the, what, what started that was Gary Johnson in 2016 at Snetterton. Me and uh, my mate Andrew Stockdale. 
Um, we went over, to, we were sort of talking to him in his awning and he's like, oh yeah, we're on about suspension. And he's like, lads, don't worry about it. He was like, as long as your tyre's wearing right and it feels comfy, just leave it alone. So since then, we've just I've stuck to that idea and it's working. So, <laughs> Which I know ain't the way to go, but if you don't know what you're doing, it's, uh, it's a tricky one. Isn't Do you it? know, it's, it's one of those things as well, like say in BSB, there, there obviously is something in like the top team. Yeah, when you get that, yeah, margin, fine. There is, you yeah, know, yeah. finding marginal gains. Yeah. And so you sometimes need a sort of expert to come in yeah, and help yeah. you with that. But there is something that, you know, like if your job was to be a suspension tech mm. and you were getting, you know, like a good, good wage every yeah. weekend and you were going and the bike looked really good, the tire wear was good. Because you're getting paid, you sort of feel obliged yeah, to make a change. Yeah, find, find something. To tweak something yeah. Sometimes you end up, and like as a rider, there is definitely an advantage of the consistency yeah. of riding the same bike. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes there's that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, obviously that you know you would always want a suspension tech but yeah. there is there's swing there is yeah, and cons. top and again <laughs> we've only ever really used part ones haven't we as well because it's like yeah. apart from Isle of Man we okay. never use like new tyres mm. so that's for me that's the big issue <laughs> the fact that your suspensions are click out or whatever is it's nowhere near the problem of yeah, what the tyre is. Like I say, we flip tyres Sa and do all sorts that, of things. That, that has also <laughs> been, uh, like, I remember when I first started in Stock 1000 and we sort of had had no idea, like, mm. where to start. Mm. And, like, we're just happy with the bike. And then we found, like, between, like, one race and another race, we, we did, like, um, I think it was something like 20 clicks different or something, like, huge oh, change. Yeah, yeah. And the bike, it transformed the bike. Yeah, and, yeah, it made, yeah. and I remember the same again, the first year in Stock 1000, you could have the bottom of the shock, you could have a spacer this way or this yeah, way, yeah, yeah. and it lowered the bike yeah. sort of 10 mil. And that, again, I was like... I'll be writing I, this I was down. at my limit on like no, my, my <laughs> I was at my limit and then we made that change and I knocked like eight tenths off and yeah, that yeah. that and I was riding the same and that just enabled so you might be you might be hit lucky and your bikes yeah, might be somewhere have. close Don't now touch it. but you yeah. could also oh, yeah. with Definitely. a little bit of ex with a so bit of need, yeah. um, mm. you know an expert technician you might be able to find easy time yeah 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 <clears throat> but who knows like we got Richard from Maxnova well Dino got Richard from Maxnova yeah, he's a, he knows his ex yeah I still had, I still I still do have uh, standard forking tools in RC so it was like <laughs> which i didn't realize that dean dean explained like obviously the the standard ones only let you like adjust like the the middle third mm. whereas like off the aftermarket ones let you adjust the whole range so obviously you can't go buy a bike from yamaha or wherever and twiddle with it in your garage and then go bin it for a roundabout like it doesn't make that much of a difference yeah. which i never realized till just last week so so yeah he came around and he was having a look at this and that and we raised the whole bike up four mil we looked a little space room back at shocker and whatever else and it was loads better loads different but you know if you don't know you don't know do you so yeah, big thanks to him for that. Can I help us? See, these two are going to be suspension. We'll get them on next year. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, the all. suspension guru. <laughs> it's, it's, a a check, yeah. it's a proper dark art, isn't it? It, it can be, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's yeah, there's that there's that many variables. But. Yeah. So it's a bit like I'm looking forward to next year that they'll be they'll have the Rossi wall up throwing springs at each oh, other and all right, sorts of right. hellish. <laughs> So, Five different shockers just sat there <laughs> waiting. Yeah. So like 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 uh, let's keep talking about like you know the Manx Grand Prix. So you know you've you've gone from those positions and you've gone up and then like, you're realising at the front of one and two, then you've gone into the race. It's a bit like I just it's mad, isn't it? Because you both want to win. I'm not trying. I'm not trying. I'm not trying. <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to get you both in the trouble here. I don't want this friendship to break up. But it's a bit like it's <laughs> mental, isn't it? Because it's like like that one-two element of it. That's that's crazy. Yeah. That is when so I came crazy. In, like came up the return road and they were like waving me in, in, uh, into winners enclosure or podium enclosure, whatever you want to call it. And uh, they were like, "You'll have to wait. There's uh, there's someone. It's really close. It's really close." And like. Well, not being horrible, Trevor, but I never even thought it was him. Do you know what I mean? I, know, I just never imagined it to be him. I thought it was going to be one of the lads on 750s or whatever else. And they were like, oh, it's uh, someone called Stephen Parsons. And I was like, whatever, I'll be second. Like, it honestly wouldn't have bothered me. I'll, I'll do, Trevor. Like, I hope he wins it. Like, honestly, I was like, oh my God, we're both going to be on podium. Whether it was second or third, or first, second, whatever, he was just like, oh, fuck. Yeah, one of your best bad. mates and we're both on podium at Manx. It's was, just. Was, was, was when that, does that happen? When does that, that win happen? at the Manx? Is that your single best moment of your life? I just, I just, yeah, I just said so. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it was, sounds, sounds weak, fucking whatever but like for like two weeks after and like every morning I was waking up like fuck me I did it like every morning it was like the first thing I thought I was like fuck a bit like you when you've done your super stock you'll have done sit very similar to thought like, you won Jesus. a stock thousand championship <laughs> he's never not mentioned anyone it knows. no 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 one's heard of it there's a film out yeah, oh, I need to watch that to be fair I know, he has not mentioned it you've not mentioned it I oh, no, oh, need to watch it I do, get get the, I do try and get the uh, try and get the uh, plug in now and again available to watch on Amazon uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's um, it's a sort of a natural buzz 
than and we never things. expected it to happen either. That was like, and it's, yeah, when you don't expect it, it, it is always the best. Uh, what about for yourself? What's your what's your best um, like sort of standout moment? Um, probably that race. To be fair, that all week, wasn't it? Just, yeah, it was just the fact that I wasn't week. expected. It would, I think, because I went there the year after. I'm probably well one of the favourites to win it in that lot, but and we did all right. Like I say, we got whatever we were second and third. Who was in that year? Uh, Nathan, it was me, Nathan Harris, Jim Nathan, Hind. Jim, jeez, you know, Jim should have probably Jim should have won it to be fair. He broke down in both races. He did, he was flying. Which, the lad was actually in front by a country, yeah. Like, and I, um, to be fair, he should have walked it because I think he did when well, he broke classic 250 record, yeah. yeah. No, he was third on the podium that yeah, year, which and was then Bruce Davy and then him, which yeah, was exactly. Like, that's some big names there, and then. Because he did, he was... I was actually third at the time, then I broke down. <laughs> oh, I you should have had him down. <laughs> no, but no, like you say, though, those, though that year, he was just, Jim was away. He's yeah. a good yeah. absolutely good away, wasn't he? Was, was this year his first TT? Or was he done? Yeah. No. yeah. Was his first uh, TT? No, yeah, Nathan. Yeah, yeah, it must have been. Yeah, Nathan yeah. Harris. 19, and, he did Manx with these, yeah, obviously. Yeah, that yeah, was it. Yeah. yeah, he had a good run on the twin, didn't That's, he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we did. Right, so, did run on 600 like, as well. He was top 10, I think. What he was it? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Really well. So, yeah, so he did, like I say... And again, big back. I think he's a bit little, Lenny. So mm. I, sorry, I missed. I, I missed his six six hundred. I'm sure yeah. he was. I'm sure he was up there. Top yeah, ten. Yeah, I'm positive he was top ten. Like, was he? Was he bad? He did hundred. No, um, oh no, Paul Jordan just pipped him in tenth. Right, Paul Jordan so just pipped him. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, like that yeah, night. I mean oh. that. And Paul Jordan could pedal about. And Jim's yeah, yeah. absolutely on the pace. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. and the good one of the best things about Jim, he just, just, just. Oh, just, chilled out. just chilled just, out. Yeah. And you never you know, imagine you could ride a bike like that, would you? No, you <laughs> wouldn't, would you? Would you? you could, that lad could pedal a bike. Yeah, We've asked yeah. him to come on the show a couple of times, but he's just relaxed. Like, yeah. No, I'm all right, lads. You know, it's and they think fair play, lad. Yeah, fair yeah. play. So you went back that that year, and then what about your lab speeds? You must have like you win the you got into the Tommy Club that year, didn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was hundred and twenty one nine. I think was my fastest. So, so we almost got hundred and twenty two. So, but yeah, because from a one nineteen up to a one twenty one. Yeah, so don't yeah. just don't play it down. <laughs> don't play it down. That's a huge jump. Uh, yeah, well, that was it. Was a good year was that because that was Sanders and start as well, and it was senior. It was blowing a bloody gale up top, like and yeah. So as I say. Yeah, we were happy with lap time like that, yeah, because... It's my god, that. Mm, we were good, we, like, but... It, the thing, it's all about the competition, isn't it? You know you know what I mean, though? Yeah, that, was, The game that got up because... Yeah, I think that year there was just quite a few, well, there was a couple of us that were we, on it and pushing it, and, yeah. We, the, 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 you know, like, uh, Nathan Harrison's never been on a slow bike. James Hines never been on a slow bike. And, you know, <laughs> you were, were you on the same ZX... Yeah, same ZX6, so, yeah, 125, 26 break. There you are, which, you know what I mean? And you could see in the speed trap times. Yeah, yeah speed traps don't lie, that's the best bit to look yeah, at. Yeah, I'll say I never got... But they they like, don't, uh, though, do they? You know, everyone said, oh, tell about how you take quarry bends. Not in a 600. 600, no, you, well, you just back flat. one and yeah, then you're you back just, straight to yeah, it. So, you know yeah. what I mean? The figures don't lie. Uh, yeah, which, again, we only did 100... 57, I think, was quickest route, Solby, which is, like I say... Walking person, isn't it? Yeah, well, <laughs> twins are going faster than I go on yeah. 600. So. <laughs> Michael Rutter's super twin on the Coverdale pattern did 161. Yeah, like, which, like I said, <laughs> quick, aren't they, boys, man? That is serious, isn't it? It's all talking it, yeah. So, right, so you went back and competed that Manx... Now, that was 2009... Yeah, pre-COVID, just before COVID. BC, classic. Yeah. Oh, it's a good time. It's a good time. <laughs> and you decided to step up to the TT that year. Yeah, because, well, I don't, I don't know if it's a written rule or whatnot, but if you were in a Manx, you're going you're to move up, aren't you? So, mm. no, well, that... Mark from People's Back had said you should do, really. So, yeah. so we did I think do, it yeah. is. Is it written or not written? I don't know if it is written. I don't written, think but it is, but it's sort like, of like a... the thing you do. Yeah. You know, <laughs> once you've won one, you, it's, it's meant to be like an apprenticeship, in it? So, right. you don't want to be just staying there and... By the way, just, so just how, how did the relationship go? This is what I'm. It was like it was like a breakup. Well, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know whether to come to TT. He didn't know whether to do it Manx. He was just because <laughs> obviously everyone everyone wants to do the TT, but it's like once you've have stepped up, then at the time I think you have to have like three years off or something, and you have to then go at back. The time, yeah. So it, you yeah. can't waste three years of your life. No. <laughs> so yeah. it, it was just yeah, just I, I, we, I sort of said to him, just give it another year. Well, yeah. chances you, you know you're definitely going to be on podium if not win and both. So it was that, and again it was financial in it it's you yeah. got to tt you've got to have two bikes down which you got to have a big bike because like yours was just a road bike wasn't it when you went the BMW. first time do you know the changes of the rules now with the yeah, yeah. only 50 people qualifying do you know yeah. the people that didn't quite qualify this year are they eligible to go back and do the max i don't know to i be think fair. they must have changed because i know they've changed something so when they must have let but, people in now because like i say you're going to be you can't have them lot sat for three years can you so no but then yeah this is a difficult one, isn't it? It because you've had practice week, mm. so why wouldn't it, like essentially sandbagger? 
you yeah. know, if you wanted to win that, you know what I mean? If that yeah. was the case, why wouldn't you go and compete with the, you know, the, the, the fast lads yeah, as such yeah. Yeah. and then go give it a few, what, you 10 could, weeks? You could do, yeah, if you're a bit sneaky like that, like, yeah. Wait, no, you get you that an extra week of practice, don't you, in a way, if you wanted to do it like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. To me, that, that that needs, that shouldn't happen. Yeah, it's a, bit I'm a not, tricky way of doing so it, really. What would you suggest as going, moving forward? <sighs> this is the biggest problem because... Yeah, well, there is no easy answer there, no. is it? If you're not quick enough to do that, and sandbagging around the Isle of Man would be nigh on impossible with the set yeah. of times. Yeah, That's yeah. the truth, isn't it? You yeah, know what I mean? Do, I do a lot of it, isn't it? Uh, pff, it uh, it's a difficult one, but if, you, so, if you've you, jumped in the deep end, it's like you know, it's like having two World Cup finals. So for people like that one up, so you might as well have another, you know what? For people that didn't qualify this year, do you think they should be stopped from going to the Manx? Then? Not, no, no, no. It's But they shouldn't go that, that same year. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the gap should be limited. Yeah, yeah. You know, it should be reduced or something like that. But so they shouldn't... the year after the now. But I'm, now, sense, yeah. saying that, though, I don't know if that that's a written rule at the moment. I don't I know say, if I'm people... I'm not because sure, even with myself at the moment, because... You didn't actually race. No, I was saying that's it. So am I all right to do Manx now? Because I tried, but I couldn't... Like I said, was, yeah, not a choice in hell that I could do anything. I did one lap and I was pagged this year. Jesus. But because I've tried TT, does that mean I'm not allowed to do Manx in another... Because... Hopefully, by the time Max comes around in another 10 week or whatever it is, my fitness should be a lot better. So, I should actually be able to ride a bike. So, okay, put, you're the perfect person to speak so, to then. D- what, what's your opinion on it? You know, in. It, well. No, no, don't don't try and please everyone. No, no, being honest right now. No, no, <laughs> that's right though, isn't it? You know, because yeah, there's a very political answer to it going yeah, on. Oh, yeah, yeah. But do you, fe- <laughs> um, do you feel like you should be able to go to the Max? Probably, yeah, because yeah, well, right. as long as your lap times, I'd say go off your lap times. Yeah. Ideal lap times, not because, like, say, if somebody's sandbagging, you do last sector in two minutes or whatever, when it should only take you a minute, then yeah, fine, and people, somebody is. But if your ideal is only like 120, mm. then you're not quick enough, are you, for TT? I'm sorry, but there should be a level at TT because it's not safe, is it? I understand what they've done, and I think it's a good thing having only 50 yeah. people. Right. Everybody was complaining, weren't they? Everybody was. It's 60 for the super sport, but yeah, 50, 50 for the big bikes. Yeah, there's yeah, yeah, 57 just... of us in senior, weren't there? Starters. Was that? Yeah, yeah, because I was really? over 50, so I was right back and I was looking at the numbers. Yeah, there was definitely over 55. Yeah. Sure, there was 57. I it was Is that numbers? There was in the Superbike race, yeah. But then even in Superbike, there was number 51, the lad that was sponsored by OnlyFans. So <laughs> some, some that's been <laughs> tweaked. He always gets a shout out. Some that's some, some been tweaked there as well somewhere, but... I happy to see then, like, Dave right. O'Johnson was number nine and they never filled his spot. Right. Know? So no, you, I, yeah. which will be interesting because there'll be numbers up for right, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's 50 I, no, starters, so they maybe just put an extra one on the back and left the gap. The might the yeah, number, yeah, yeah. Enough, yeah. Then I didn't no, so no, no, it's interesting because the fact that the, the figures will be there, yeah, you know, there'll be, the, yeah. the, but there were numbers missing, but but they've added it, them at the end. It would be interesting. Gap, yeah. It yeah, would be because the times were different this year, and oh, and all the conspiracy. No, but that's like that's 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 interesting, though, isn't it? It is interesting, but but like you say, that that extra week of practice mm. but i'll tell you what let's talk about why you didn't actually make it to the race week no it, mate it's a hell of a story you know what i mean <laughs> i think like this this is like pre-bc and i think i don't really know how to talk about this you know obviously you went through covid and then you got an absolute left hook this is a big one from mike tyson one it was that bastard yeah anyway, uh yeah we got stage four blood cancer which was yeah jesus wet about uh, about as bad as it was going to get, I think. Really, how did you, uh, how did you find <laughs> out? It was bad. Uh, sorry, <laughs> how did you find out? Like, uh, I got a little little lump in my neck, just like a pee. Didn't hurt her out, but just a small big... neck as well. I don't well, know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> didn't notice it. At it takes all. a while to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I just did. Yeah, a little lump there, and I was just getting tired and tired. It was like me and we obviously live in bottom of the Lake District now. Me and girlfriend. And we were going for walks. Normally, I've got rucksack on, and I'm the one like going up, and she's having to wait. For, I'm having to wait for her. And we did it. She was sort of same pace as me. And then next walk, she'd be buggering off, and I'm there panting like buggery. And then yeah, there was one up T Bay hills up there. She just literally buggered off. She had rucksack on with old jackets and that lot, and I was absolutely hanging. So what, and then yeah, I couldn't do a day's work. I was getting to like lunchtime, sleeping for like an hour in car. And then when it got really bad, which was like March time, yeah, and this, March time last year, I was, we were meant to be in at like seven o'clock at morning when work starts. I was getting in at like nine because I just couldn't wake myself. No alarm would wake me. And then, yeah, brew time, which is like 10, I'd go for an hour's kip. And then at dinner time, which is like one, one o'clock, I'd go for about two hours kip in the car. How did the suck you? 
<laughs> well, I've been there long enough that you know. <laughs> he's, an, he's a nice lad. That's why. But what what, what time period is? It? Sorry, Chrissy. Like what time was this? Like a couple of months really. I say Christmas time. We were starting to feel a bit like I say a bit. Not my fitness wasn't there. And again, TT was sort of maybe it might happen, maybe not because it was out of COVID and mm. lockdowns were opening. So it was like, mm. is it going to happen? So again, we were doing fitness for that, and I was going from like fifty mile bike rides to like forty mile to thirty mile, and I was like training a couple of times a week. Like this is not how fitness is meant to go, is it? You're meant to get fitter, not worse. And yeah, so so between Jesus. your f- first like noticing a lack of fitness, did did was it like a few months, and then did you decide to go to hospital? Or? Uh, well, we just saw a GP and that lot, and again, it was during COVID, so everything took a age and that lot, so it wasn't the best. Once I got in the system, they were brilliant. I can't thank NHS enough. Yeah. Proper, absolute mega. But trying to get into the system is a bit hard, isn't it? It's, it's like COVID, anything. Yeah. yeah, especially during COVID because, yeah, we did that. There was a phone appointment two weeks later and then that got cancelled for another phone appointment. That was two weeks after that, so that's already like a month. And I Jesus did that. Christ. And then two weeks later, I had to go see the doctor to actually see it. So it was like six weeks before I even saw a doctor. And then they booked me in for a scan and then that got cancelled for whatever reason. So that it just, yeah, went on and on. And then we finally went into A&E, which is, yeah, if anybody has a heart condition, go to A&E because we found out that they have to, if they can't fault you down there, they have to refer you back and sort of suss out what the hell's going wrong, which is they did that and then they started doing blood tests and uh, (coughs) scans and that lot. And then, yeah, the shit started to hit the frying pan. But at what point did you think Okay, I'm going to say this, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and be. Hey, you are, so, no, 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 no. I'm just saying about the whole situation is because, like, I'm going to be very open about it. It's like you know, every time you get ill or something's wrong, you know, you type it in on Google. The, like, it always it reverts back to it could be cancerous, it yeah. could be this, it could be that. You know, at what point were you thinking? You know, to be fair, I never no, thought it was cancer at all. We just thought we had long it. COVID, and I thought because yeah. I was lifting weights at the same time. And I was doing, yeah, silly, because I used to, yeah, weights and, yeah, lift silly weights, if you would. I just thought I'd bl- pop the blood vessel, because you do, don't you? Watch Strong, I don't know if you watch Strong Man, but we always watch Strong Man. You pop vessels quite often, so I thought, I'm just... I'm a- just henched. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought like, you've been a silly bastard and you've lifted too much, Stephen. Uh, and, yeah, and that's what it was. And I thought, oh, I've just caught COVID, not realised I caught it, got long COVID, because, like I say, out of breath, this, and all that lot, that's long COVID, it's... Prime, so I just thought that, and then it was only when the doctor went and sat me down in the office and said, be, "Yeah, be prepared." What I'm going to say, and then yeah, he said, "I would say I've got cancer," and then yeah, your ass just falls out after that. Oh, so, um, what's the uh, what sort of protocol did you have to go through? Was it chemo? Uh, yeah, chemo. I've had how many rounds of chemo? I've had fifteen. I had yeah, they put me on one round of chemo, which was ABVD. Uh, I had four cycles of that, and then they had to go for a PET scan, which is yeah, pretty much the injection with radiation and sugar, and then all your cancer eats your sugar because it's yeah, it wants all your energy, and that like lights up on your scan that you get, and it's like a Christmas treat. Well, it's like thermal imaging, mm-hmm. so yeah, because he did that because I had tumor in my neck, multiple tumors in my chest, and it had gone to my pelvis, which is why it was stage four because it's bone and blood cancer was mine. Uh, so yeah, so they did that, did my first round of chemo, that got me rid of me, one in my neck and one in my pelvis, but my ones in my chest were still, because they had four tumours, three, four tumours, they weren't a diet, so, but yeah, in my chest, uh, and that was still present, so then I had to go into what they called escalated P comp, which that was a vicious bastard was that, yeah, and that's hell on earth. <laughs> got, what, 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 got, sorry, like, pardon Totally pardon my ignorance uh-huh. on that. What what is that then? What? Uh, just a different type of chemo, which was it's a lot more intrusive. It was, well, three days I had to go to Barra, and it was literally you get there at eight o'clock in the morning, you don't leave until six, and you just pump you through because I had a pick line, it went in the arm, into your main vein, and it goes into your heart because if you don't have it, you toxic. The chemo is that toxic; it burns your veins because I've got a couple of scars when my veins have started to collapse. Holy and they are shit! Just down there, you can't see it now, but. Vein that goes down there, it was all like red and inflamed, and it's because it was collapsing. So the nurses were a bit worried about me on that one. But, mm. but you know, from the initial consultation, yeah, you know what? Right, son, sit down, prepare yourself. No, 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 being serious because you, you know, like, what were they giving you? Were they, did they give you a time to like look, son? 
you've got how long you got to live was it that uh, kind of conversation that not made... quite i got 30 percent chance at best at curing it 30 percent. yeah which was that was a mind fuck was that because mate you're the happiest man i know <laughs> and i take no 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 but it's like yeah well they just f- how did you well i didn't to be fair i never wanted to know anything like that even through my treatment and that, like, the only thing i learned from what i've had because all the chemicals i just i don't give a shit mate is it fixing me because my two options was like say i have chemo and I might survive, or I don't have chemo, and you're dead in a couple of months. So I don't want to know. Well, yeah, just you just said you're not getting. You need this to fix yourself. So I was like, right, shove it in me, and we'll give it our best shot. And that's always been my attitude, to be fair, because there's no point fussing. You've got a shit situation. Like my doctor is absolute blunt as blunt can be. He's, yeah, but he's spot on. I, I liked him. I've dealt with another one with radiotherapy, which was sort of end of my treatment. And yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of him, but me, <laughs> me chemo doctor, I, thought, I don't have a bad word to say, but he was blunt as out because he just walked in. He went, Stephen Parsons, I went, yeah, second of the eighth, 94. Yeah, yeah, that's me, mate. And he just went, because yeah, stage four, blah, 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 because I've got complete obliteration of me superior clavicle artery, which what complete obliteration means, I still don't know to this day, because for me... That sounds cool. It sounds like it's gone. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? If it sounds this, totally if this, <coughs> this truck had completely obliterated, you'd be like, oh, we got that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so what that is, because that's your big one, I think, from your Jesus. heart to your brain. Imagine that Imagine that being your job. Like, you every you're day you've got to deliver yeah, which like, the, presume... the worst moment of someone's life. Yeah, you've got to do that every single day. Be... I know that part's not very nice, but like I say, we're here, we're talking. And I wonder if he's in the pub now going, I've got one person I like. <laughs> that Parsons, what a fella. Uh, um, excuse my ignorance again, like dumb, but or like, are you through all of you, is through all your chemo, like through the other side now, or what, where you at now? Uh, yeah, should be. Touch wood. I've had two clear scans. Here you go. You Get on, much. son. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, let's get it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've had two clear scans, but they were sort of in between my treatment. So I've got one, another scan, end of July. I haven't got a date yet. As long as that show's clear, that should be me. But I'm always in, for the next five years, I think it is, I'm always in a bit yeah. of a sticky situation. Yeah, but. but you know, from what you've been through, has it uh, has it altered your outlook on life at all? Uh, yeah, massively, to be fair. In what way? I've always known I'm like this, so I, I'm trying to... I'm trying to uh, <laughs> you know what I mean, though? You do and you don't. I don't know. It's a bit, still a bit raw at the moment, <laughs> but it's a bit... You just... I don't know, stuff doesn't really matter anymore, little stuff. You're just like, really, mate? It's mm. like, yeah, everybody's day-to-day. It's like work. Everybody gets effing this and effing that. You're like, really? Is it that? Yeah, it just, I know I was always been pretty chilled, and I think that's road racing tired, isn't it? Because we've all lost good mates, haven't we, road race? And it's it's a nasty part of the sport, but it is what it is, isn't it? Which is, it's the best thing in the world, isn't it, when it's going right? But it's like somebody has a big crash, and you go through it, and there's not much of a worse scene than going through somebody else's crash, is there? So, yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, game would definitely change me that way. But... At what point did you tell Matt? Well, we were going to do that. This is how know. chilled out he was about it. Well, he maybe wasn't at that end, but he seemed to be from what he said to me. So we're going to do that race in 20, uh, that's, uh, 24 in Spain. So mm. the um, Ramon that had organised it said, you and Stephen want to come do it? So I got in touch with Trevor. I was like, you know, do you want to go have a bash at that? It'd be right, laugh 24 race, you know, in Spain at Catalonia. It's like GP track. It'd be unreal to thing to do. He was like, I don't know at the moment. My chest's a bit bad, you know, I can't barely walk upstairs. About three weeks later, I messaged him. I was like, how's your chest getting on? Oh, yeah, I've got cancer. <laughs> that was all the message said. <laughs> I was just like, what? Is he You're laughing? You're like, what's yeah. going on? That was it. That was... That was that was like why didn't, why didn't you said earlier I don't really like talking about it well fair enough but fucking hell <laughs> like just Uh-oh. that's how sort of not that he wasn't asked about it but it was like you know because it's happening we'll get on with it do you know what I mean because the mad that like the thing is with social media everyone's keeping an accidental tab on everyone you know what I mean people yeah. seem to have to put everything on online and you just it was just radio silence for you uh, well I don't know really I'll great lot anyway with no. social but I'll just. I had bigger issues, to be fair. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> was, I'm a bit of a selfish bugger that way. No. Well, not selfish, but I say I had bigger issues than putting on Facebook. And again, everybody would been lovely and they're absolute mega amount of support I've got. But when you're dead, well, near enough dead, last thing you want to do is message people, oh, thank you very much. Like I say, it's very much appreciated, but you've got bigger issues. That's that, the way that, I... That, that, that for me, like, because when it came to light for me... Mm. 
was a photo like it was you in hospital and you just it was just your reaction to it mm. was he's fucking done it he's kicked its yeah, ass yeah, and it yeah. was just you could just tell that fr- you know what without sounding a bit fruity here but you could <laughs> tell it was a proper friend no no you know what I mean though because uh, yeah. you know it, you know from the outside looking in I've just seen you both having a laugh and you both race and I'm thinking you know all right you know the, the both completely get I bet they have the odd dig but your reaction to that one photo where there wasn't a hair on you, you, you know, you know what I mean. That yeah, was it was yeah. just two years, and you just like you say, it just made though everything else in the world just go. Yeah, it yeah. was just your smiley face, <laughs> and it was just like you're everything kicking. you're still kicking. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, I we, we hadn't seen it at any club meetings, no, not you know, it's just you're one of them faces that you went. Where the hell is he? Yeah. Where the hell is he? You just think, has he got his last pregnant? Has he done got a house? Has he done all the boring things that stop racing? You know what I mean? And then like, holy shit, my, mate. Like, it was just... It, Do you know, the, wow. there'll be people wow. listening to this right now that are actually go, like going through exactly that sort of thing. Yeah. And um, would you have... What like sort of advice would you give to anyone that's like going through it? Get a friend with a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the treatment's bloody amazing. What it does, like I say, it's it is hell on earth. Like it's like saying there's no, just everything. It's not. I say, just even the pain. Like obviously, we all know you're going to be ill. I think that's a given. In everybody knows chemo is going to make you ill, but the pain because my white blood cell count was well zero pretty much. They gave me a load of injections, which was filled gastrin injections, which are evil little bastards because they just. Your white, yeah, you just boost your white blood cells. But the pain that I got in my hip and that lot was unreal. Off, yeah, every from about day eight in my cycle, was 22 days as a cycle from about day eight to day like 13, 14, I didn't sleep a wink, like because it was just agony. It was just like if you've ever fell on an electric fence at full whack, just that every 30 seconds, you just get zapped and you, oh, yeah, little magic, oh, yeah, and that's just what life was for five, well, three, four days, so which was, yeah, because I was on morphine and that lot and yeah it didn't even touch the sides really so because yeah but then again you stop that and then that has a side everything's got a side it's just nasty but you can treatment is it does its job <laughs> and like i say there is a light at the end of the tunnel and like i say yeah you will get there mm-hmm. you've just got to fight the bastard because she's an evil little bitch and, and- <laughs> So just no, I'm, I'm literally sitting here absolutely gobsmacked because what, what, what yeah. was your driving force? The fact that he chucked it at the scenery around like at the TT and thought, I'm going to get there and beat him or something. Uh, <laughs> well, you know what I mean? That, other thing to that is, I think it's helped me massively having a goal because my goal always mm-hmm. to get my ass to the TT because I was like, when he, I got when well, my first chemo was Wednesday of practice, or should have been Wednesday at practice. So, like I say, it's been bang on near enough a year since I've started and I got diagnosed like two or three weeks before and that. So like I say all the way through, I've been like, right, how long is this going to last, Mr. Doctor? And he's like, right, well, you've got six cycles or whatever, and then it'll finish it, whatever. I was like, right, that gives me X amount of time to get fit for TT and that lot. And that's where, yeah, it was a bit of a, well, a massive kick in the nads when I couldn't do it, but I know at least I got there and that lot. But having that driving force of always getting to TT was, I think, massive for me because like now, now that I've come back, I probably fin- felt shitter in the last two days than I have for the last, year or so but I think it's just the fact that I've relaxed mm. TT's not happened and I don't really have anything to drive me forward and have that goal which, so it was next year yeah well, I said there's next year but now yeah so like I said yeah, we'll yeah. get back on it and that lot and it'll be fine but yeah I think that was, having a goal is that yeah that was one of our first thoughts when he said he had cancer I was like fucking I didn't go 19 took TT and now that's happened and we don't need mics again and if it does get him, he's not. He's never going to get to a done a TT. That was like, that was a, as that not obviously the worst thing would be losing him. But the first thing I thought was that it was like, he's one one of his life ambitions not going to get to do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Probably his biggest life ambition, you know. Mm-hmm. Which is yeah, cool. And but, to, going to the TT this year was it just a case of like you could do one practice lap, but then you're just like exhausted. Yeah, pretty much we did. Well, first night we did two laps on six hundred. I was blowing after that. Well, I, I, t- I, I tell you what, sorry for in- interrupting you, but it's yeah. it's even the story up to that because I. Me and Matt and, you know, everyone who comes to the TT, you know, you have to get your your mountain course license, which is accumulation of like 10 signatures and everything. He got released and just went straight into the deep end and you were doing like, let's talk. <laughs> hey, let, 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 mate, mate, I literally followed him around from track to track and it was just like, you talk, but it's, it was the struggle of getting to the TT even after uh, you've got well, the take off you go. Yeah, it wasn't easy, was it, actually? Because we had, well, we finished treatment. April or whatever. Like I say, we were going to do Croft for you lot at North East, but that was 
I finished treatment on Wednesday, and that was the weekend, so I, no, we best, we best not do that. Give it a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, get well, did that, and then the week, well, week after, because again, that was beginning of April, your signatures have got to be in by the end of May, uh, beginning of May, haven't they? 12th yeah. of May, I think, isn't it? Yeah, Yeah, but I think... Because I missed that day. Was <laughs> right? Yeah. I think, well, I think you're I'm only had three years to plan it. I think your race dates on the actual result sheet has to be, like I say, 1st of May. Yeah. So we had four weekends or whatever, and I need to get six signatures because obviously I've not done anything the year before. So yeah, we went and followed you about for a, a month or so, didn't we? So but you were like, it was going like, I tell you what, that this is the mad thing is normally go like, you go racing to actually, you know, get yourself like sharp and everything. This just shows the drive of the lad. He was going to Silverstone, it was snowing. Uh, well. <laughs> and it was like everyone else was packing up and there's him putting his body warmer on with like no blood cells in him. He's like, I'm gone, just drop the flag. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get this done. You know, no, but the thing is, like normally everyone else would kind of tootle around. He hasn't got tootle around written in his bloodstream, this boy. He had elbows out, flying around, it, mate. It was absolutely class. And then talk us through the list of where you went. Uh, Caravan on the van, uh, up and know. down. Go for it. Go for it. What's the list? Well, we did Silverstone, didn't we? Yep. Uh, and then we did Darlim all weekend after. Yep. East Fortune. Yep. Uh, and where did we go? This is on week. Park, we're, we're all, didn't we? Yep. And then, yep. like I say, that was my four weekends in April, and that's me lots, so and that was that. But, yeah. I, I, bet, just... I bet after at all the you know shit that you'd been through the first time you got out and opened the bike up, I bet it was an amazing. It thing. was good, yeah. I was a bit concerned if I had to see if I still had it because it's it takes on it, doesn't it? It's, mm. When you do it week in week out, you get used to it, don't you? Flying on at hundred and fifty or whatever. But that's it. I've sat in the chair getting pulled from the drugs for the last year. I thought, am I going to have it? And then Silverstone, like I say, it was snowing on it, and it was just. <laughs> not a disaster, <laughs> right? Off. Yeah, it was I was like, disaster. what am I doing? Here? Silly bugger, aren't you? But. Uh, and then Darley Moore was good. I've done Darley a few times. So I was like, right, have you still got the racer in you? If you Because like I say, you need to have that. I don't give a fucking get your elbows out. Like I say, it's it's something else, isn't it? And yeah, we did that. We did Darley. And yeah, we did all right, didn't we? We got second and that lot. So uh, <laughs> just just what, like just shrug that off a second. That was <laughs> made outstanding. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that was bloody nice. Was that, like I say, just to. Not give a shit about anything else. Just you're in the zone. Like I say, a breaking mark is bikes moving about a bit. Yeah, yeah, we're we're having a portion. And yeah, that was <laughs> a hell of a. Good we're having a. <laughs> <laughs> we're having a good time. And yeah, again, doing that. Daddy more like a good wheelie. I can't wheelie, but give it a good shot. Yeah, we're just gonna have to talk that, about that is, with Mr. Stevens here. He's, he's, he's wheelie king, isn't he? But uh, just doing that, just having a laugh on your bike. It was just yeah, mint like it's. But yeah, this is what it's all about, isn't it? Like I say, whatever makes you tick, but that makes me tick, and yeah. But you're like you you were ticking and then going straight to sleep like the exhaustion uh, levels. Well, <laughs> like, oh, you just literally sleep, wake up, go ride a bike, and vice versa. You're just vice versa. Uh, isn't well, it? pretty much that's what I've done for the last year. I just sleep all the time now because yeah, it just takes its toll on you. Because will that change or is that? Hopefully, like I say, I think it's just the fact that everything's just still recovering. Because yes. again, it's like my chest. Obviously, all the rest of my hair is growing back, even though it's a little bit thin on top. But it's got your pubes back as well. I asked. Yeah, I've got pubes. <laughs> got a bit of ass hair in there as well now. <laughs> As soon as I saw my hair in the <laughs> let's, like, let's, see back. <laughs> let's see him. Let's see him. Absolutely. Get hairy football again. Uh, I was about, and, and Jesus, I'll tell you what, while he's been doing that, you've been setting up your own goals. I was about, like, so you've been, oh, you are literally the wheel. You've never seen a man wheelie a bike like this in my life. Honestly, oh. it, I'm totally jealous of this man's capabilities on a motorcycle. It's only practice. It's only pra it doesn't matter it where is. he is, no nothing. He's like, hold on, let's talk. Um, you've recently gone on to Michelin's as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. You've, you've been a busy boy while this has all been going on. Yeah, yeah, we've got, got a good bit of help off Michelin, which Trevor was in as well till he's uh, landed his big factory deal with Wilcox. But yeah, he's, uh, he was. <laughs> we, we've, we've had a good bit of help off Michelin, haven't we? So, uh, yeah. yeah. And they are the pretty shit outlet, to be fair. So. Can't complain at that. And then, yeah, we had a, had a go at World Wheelie Championship, which was just a bit of a, not that you get bored of racing, but it was like something different to do on a race bike, if that yeah. makes sense. Do you know what I mean? It was just some, uh, something to not, stick on your CV. Yeah, it was just a bit of a laugh, really. <laughs> so we went there first year and we, we lost by uh, one mile an hour. We were second in the non-turbo class. We did, I think we did 145. I think the other lad did 146 <laughs> and it was more or less wet when it when it went. Like He disappeared on back wheel and there was spray coming his back tire and I'm thinking, Phew. No, I'm not. I've got. I've got races to do. Rest this year. I'll just be riding down here. And then the, the red flag did it all before I got a chance to go anywhere. But I, I would definitely want to beat him, like um, Steve Warner, who's called. 
<laughs> we, Your name is Mark. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was because I beat him next year. Uh, so uh, we went back, <laughs> went back, and somehow uh, a fellow called Tom Swales, he's done like two hundred and two mile an hour or something, daft on the turbo, yes. probably faster than that to be Two hundred and four, maybe. How far do you have to keep it up for? for a kilometer, point six of a mile. Point six You've of a mile, the, yeah. So the front wheel's not allowed to touch for. Yeah, yeah. Point six <laughs> of a mile, but the the fastest way to do it, which is what Tom was telling me, is you sort of you sort of start over a, like maybe over half a mile back. From where the wheeling needs to start from so where I, what i was doing was setting off doing a, doing a wheelie bringing it down slowing back down to like third and then clutching it up in third and doing the doing the distance you got to do he was saying as soon as you as soon as you get into second bring it up and just keep going the whole way which is like i don't know so it'd be a good lump over a mile so i was like well what if i can't wheel it that far and he's like if you can do half a mile you can do a mile so anyway at the end <laughs> at the end, end of the week at <clears throat> end of the weekend uh i think it was only my third at like i don't know second or third to last run sort of thing i was like we're gonna have to give it a shot and uh, Steve Warren actually he's got a really good video it's on my Instagram my Facebook uh, he um, got a mint video of the whole thing like you just you disappear outside and back wheel it says so you come up in second you end up in, in I don't know if I was fifth or fourth fifth I think by the time I finished 150 mile an hour so which was like four or five mile an hour faster than the next guy so it's pretty good fun did you go to like wheelie school or anything like that no I just like, I had a little bit of a mess about when I was like 14 or 15 on a Charles bike and just seemed to get knack of it quite quick really can you wheelie uh, I'm not the best, like, I <laughs> I don't, yeah, I can't really. No, There's I a bit can't. of a power wheel coming out of a car, about a lot of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I'm murdering the back brake, like, get back down, get back down. Mate, I, I'd roof it. You know when you just know, you just get whoop, here it comes, <laughs> bang, that's it, there goes my bike. Have you proper roofed a wheelie, then? You must have. Uh, not on a road bike, no. Touch wood for the love on of my, God. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, uh, I did on my little dick, well, I've done on a road bike, so I'm a little DT50, um, we were coming up. <laughs> Short weapon. At five horsepower. Hour, yeah, yeah, five horsepower. Is it not da um, dangerous when the front wheel comes down? If the front wheel's going like 30 miles No, this is dead stop by that time. Like, your front tire's dead, dead stop. stop. Yeah, yeah. And then the rear's doing 150. And you've got like a. I had like a road Michelin on the front rather than a race one. So obviously you sort of need tire warmers. But how they run it there is you're all in like the holding area and then you all go up to the. I'll go in a group up to do the, to start the wheelie, and you, I suppose you could have a generator and tire warmers up there, but they don't really let anyone else up there. So wow. by the time you've sat there for twenty minutes, half an hour, and everyone else has gone, your tires are stone cold again. Sounds stupid. Why? Why, why would you want a tire warmer for a wheelie? Just so when your front lands, it's got a bit of grip. You know what I mean? Like you were saying, so right. just so it doesn't slide as much. But I had a, I had a road Michelin up front, so obviously a bit more grippy. I guess it's really cold. important to be ball straight when the yeah, front yeah. goes down, and the handlebars straight as well, or else it's fucking shit shit. <laughs> fucking slides. So it just got it goes across track like that for like a good sort of. We can see on one of the videos it lands and it's yeah. like a good two or three seconds, and then it oh, grips. You see blue smoke uh, yeah. come off it. Yeah, yeah, big, yeah. when you're watching him, you can see him puff yeah. the blue smoke. And then some lads are there on turbo bikes doing like 205 mile an hour wheelies. Yeah. Is, just, it, is like, it quite dangerous? Compared to road racing, not really, no. There's no, there's no, <laughs> there's no to even it. You're on a runway. You know, there was, there was, to be fair, there was a guy I killed a few years back. I don't know who or what, but yeah, he was. Uh, but yeah, there's not really anything to sort of hit. So you, you I'd class it as fairly safe. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Even compared to like a track day. And you, there's only one at a time. Do you know what I mean? There's no barriers and out. Yeah, but guess, just, if you crashed it, I suppose you, you just slide, wouldn't you? Yeah, That's yeah. Bad. But the trouble with the runway is it's that grippy. It's like almost like um, sandpaper. Mm. So there's Steve Warner who actually flipped his on the last run. Mm. Um, he just wore straight through his levers, straight through his gloves. Mm. And he's biked one side of it just looks so like it had been just sanded for about three days. Like it had just ground it down so quickly. Yeah. Oh, no. Nah. So it's a lot rougher than normal tarmac, you know, so, so it's, it's quite abrasive. So you word. going to the TT would be a piece of piss. So every time everyone's in the back wheel, you're like... <laughs> Yeah, it's not a bother. This not a bother. Yeah, it's been some good pictures to be fair. Yeah, yeah, that was. I think that's my one of my favourite pictures of the. I think my favourite's got to be Hickman sidewards at Crosby, but then I would say number two. Have you seen the picture? Through the pump trees is. No, I need to see this. I need to see this. In fact, I'll get it up as you're speaking. But um, so in terms of like a. A TT review. Do you want to kind of go through individually how your TTs went, and then we can just talk about like the actual like the results and stuff. Yeah, can do. Do you want to? Hold on, that'll be your first time. Hold on, your second time on a foul. Well, yeah, no, like, yeah, like, I didn't do much on the foul first time. First time, well, stand suspension and everything yeah, like that. It was wasn't horrendous, it? yeah. And you bent it's a brand new R six into a million yeah. bits, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was less than six. Well, less than seven hundred miles. Jesus, Still hit twelve grand. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> anyway got, yeah, move on. Yeah, got a, bent, got a bent arm. I tell you what, that's one of the best tattoos on the grid. Is that from? Hold on, is that a double like double sided scar from that one? Yeah, crash? yeah, that's from the yeah the operator Get from both sides. On. You see, wow. And then there's some screw pins in there as well. Screws in there. Your bike looks like a chasing mm -hmm. racing tattoo. 
Yeah, well, he's just meant to be the outline of the R6, to be fair, mm. of, the, of the actual <laughs> bike that did the damage. So. No wonder they've travelled up. But yeah, it works oh, both right, ways, doesn't it? It works both ways, so. Yeah. If you look at another bike above yeah, you, it does it's, look it's pretty, pretty similar. Close, yeah. He's going to sue us. That's it. I had the tattoo before you lot. So no, but no, like you say, so that would be your, but let's talk like your first time around there on a big bike then. Like, what was it just like, holy shit. It's fair to some of it, isn't it? It's, it's about the only, well, it is the only spot in the world, isn't it? You actually properly understand what a foul can do. Because mm. I've, yeah, short circuit, we've done it and you just, you stop, well, they're just straight out, straight out, isn't it? Yeah. Not big enough at TT. Yeah, going over Crosby, down, into Grieber Castle and that lot. It's just unreal, You're isn't it? You just, that, yeah. so I say you fully tucked in him and the helmet was just like pushing against me. And I was like, bloody <laughs> hell, this is just something else, isn't it? Because <laughs> yeah. you were riding for the Wilcox team this year, weren't you? So oh, like, yeah. And then Sean Anderson was on the 600 sort of speed yeah, bike and Sean's experience around there, was it a lot of bouncing off ideas or was it quite Rossi Wall? I'm bringing back the Rossi Wall. I don't know, Sean's <laughs> been in that lot and helped yeah. us out a little bit, but again, when you're in that little experience that I had, you're just sort of doing your own thing, aren't you? Yeah. It's no good. It's again, you can watch Hickey until you're blue in the face, aren't you? It doesn't matter, yeah, watch 135 mile an hour. It doesn't mean you're going to go and do it, does it? You need to figure it out yourself. And <laughs> if you do figure out how to turn it into 135, yeah, please well, let me know. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> and again, everybody's you're just different, aren't you? Because I know, like Bishop Court, I love Bishop's Court. Well, even like first year, I was getting that like flat out on a 600. I say you struggle like mad, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Until you're like, no, I'm, I'm rolling massively. I was like, no, you just... End of crunk, I was doing that way before you. Yeah, I was like, say, yeah, end of crunk, body, you're flat out and I'm no, still... Yeah, yeah. You know, everyone has a little bit to get quick, used yeah, to quicker. Yeah, it's just so. whatever clicks in your brain, isn't it? Like, yeah. end of crunk, I still struggle with it now, to be fair. I know it's flat out and you can get it flat, can't you? But I still just roll a little bit. It's a cool picture. No, that, that is an awesome photo, to be fair. That, that is an that. awesome photo. <laughs> Great, <laughs> Grace will have to put yeah, that on. I'm a good look through your pictures, uh, seeing you met Richard Rollins. Do you, yeah, did yeah. you have a bit crack with him or just quickly, quick pick? No, did he, he, he came up for a quick picture to him. No, we just, uh, that was, I think it was David Bert, uh, did David Birchill that put that on? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, did you? Yeah. Just have a bit of a, yeah, just had a bit of a chat, but it was just before the, I think it was just before the senior. So it was sort of like, I was doing my tire pressures and just got a picture and got back to what I was doing earlier. Yes, it's going to be sponsored by Gas Monkey next year. You want. In terms of the sport, that sort of, the people like Richard Rollins coming over and like bringing this sort of new crowd yeah, of yeah. his like millions it's of mega, followers yeah. hard, hardly any of them probably knew what the TT yeah. was and then all of a sudden mm. they do it's weird that America doesn't seem to have a clue about Alaman you know, it's just well, well they don't even know, most of them don't even know England so. most of uh, <laughs> most, <laughs> most bike fans in America probably don't know that much about the TT but the ones that do are like yeah. massive fans yeah 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 and they're like, fans. Oh, yeah like yeah. super fans yeah mm. and I guess it's that sort of thing's That'll great for getting, bit, yeah, for getting yeah. more people and I've got to say the whole uh, TT plus thing I know you've seen a few things on Facebook especially after the first couple of nights like uh, complaining about like glitches and stuff but on the whole I think they did a fantastic a job idea, all yeah. of the all of the presenters I think it was really good um i thought dave or johnson sort of stole the job. show i thought it was excellent but even now i don't for anyone that's listening if you if you paid the 14.99 or you can still do it if you've got a smart tv you can have the tt app and you've got every single race from the last like and 10 practice, years yeah. and yeah. practice and you can go through there's interviews john hogan's done a lot of interviews which were brilliant uh with riders like in mm. in a sort of uh informal setting really yeah, really yeah, yeah. good uh prop like i think for 14.99 everyone's well i think it's yeah. been spot on this year i think publicity wise i think it's mega in here yeah. i don't know what i know like i say some people have complained and a lot but i know i've not watched it because obviously we were there but I think it was mega even when we were there. I think it was more people's internet letting them down rather than anything else well, on their phone, mobile yeah, and but... stuff like that. Not many, like, you know, like the actual quality was still there, but yeah. it was just more the delivery of it, not from their end. But race, Race-wise, they only sort of showed the top 10 or 15, don't they? But practice week, there was almost everyone, I think. Yeah. We just yeah. even shots of, I had number 50 on my bike and there was even shots of me. So a bit like with Northwest, there was shots of everyone nearly almost in practice week, weren't there? So mm, yeah. which is good. Um, in terms of so like this this year's TT, we quickly run through your results. So like of the races that you did, what did you? What I did was you... somehow managed fifteenth in Superbike. Mint uh, first Superbike race. The first you, you are sorry. The first no no, yeah, the, yeah, the no first which one, is yeah, like yeah. the hardest one because like everyone's fresh and everyone's up the speed and everything. That fifteenth yeah, yeah. mate, yeah, outstanding. Yeah, I was happy with that like best lap. It should be. Uh, I did a one twenty four zero four I think in practice, but I didn't. I somehow didn't manage to beat that in racing. I think it's probably because it was practice. You're just more relaxed. Yeah. Whereas in racing, you sort of even though you don't put any, I don't put any pressure on myself, but I think like, you do. You do try a little bit harder, but yeah. it, that sort of sets me back if that makes I think sense. Hick, Hickman did his fastest lap of the week in practice. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? How it works yeah. like that. A 34? He did a 33-something on... Did he not do a 34? 
I'm not sure. No, he was on for a 34 and then he broke, he he ran out of fuel, but his fastest actual recorded was like a 33, some like a strong 33. But then, I mean, even last lap of the scenery, he did like a 130 point something, uh, which is quite. Yeah, it's good going with that wind that was in that scene. Exactly, was exactly. Unreal, so yeah, fifteenth, uh, fifteenth in the first <laughs> no, one. Twenty yeah. right? third in uh, first super spot. Uh, even a bit crowy in that one. So I'm gonna rub that in on the on the Saturday night <laughs> in front of all his team. <laughs> I'll beat you first time in my life. I'll get a whack off him next time I see him now. Um, and <laughs> there's like seven places in front as well. I didn't just beat him. I annihilated him. <laughs> <laughs> Very useless. <laughs> anyway, Kobe watching this going dead man. Uh, dead man. <laughs> he's um, a big man to that. <laughs> he's a big lad. Right. Good no. fight, that to be fair. No, no, good, no, good fight. Let's make it up. Uh, yeah, right. I, I, don't make fancy, I don't fancy that now. I want to be able to rest a bike for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Not a ball of mush. Um, yeah, and then we ended up, uh, we were line P21 in Superstock, and then on the third lap, my exhaust drops a bit coming over at start line. And I, I, I could hear there was a lot, of, a lot of noise going on, so I thought something wrong here. Yeah. I thought it was a little plug. You know, a little plug that you put your lens sensor in, but I knew it had been locked wide, so I was hoping it was that anyway, because I thought I won't get black flagged. And then when so you I never looked behind you. Got a chance to look down, the whole end cam was just hanging and swinging, and my foot was getting hotter. And I was like, fuck, I'm going to get black flagged again. I didn't black flag me till Solby, to be fair. Whereas when I got there, I was like, I'm going to make it. If I get to Ramsey, I'm just not going to stop. And then, yeah, but they did the black flag me and that with that. So I jumped off the bike. And there's a video of me kicking the fuck out of the bike. But <laughs> was I wasn't, was I wasn't, about? yeah, I wasn't, just, I wasn't just... kicking the bike because <laughs> I was angry. I was just kicking the bike to get the end can off the bike. So hopefully they'd let me go again. So there's no noise limit. So they're not going to be bothered about your end can. When, who, you carried a bike out of a yeah, ditch, that was, did you? That was, I don't know that. what his name is. I need to learn his name, don't I? But that was a lad we only fans again. He, <laughs> he, the, lap, the lap before, <laughs> second shout out. The, oh, the lap before, he went straight over the bales and landed in the field. Somehow the bike was like new and he was fine. So I don't know how the no bent forks and out. Went straight for it, right? So landed in field. So we gave him on to lift that. Go up. buy a Yamaha, kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah straight away. Tough little boots. So that's the and then <laughs> yeah, next yeah. race. And then we were twi- what were we in the thirtieth in the next super spot race, but that was fairly windy and it was just yeah, it's only under twenty five hours, so it's never gonna be that good. But Too we're happy enough yeah. with that. Yeah, we're happy enough with that. Okay. And we were running out of fuel, like we were coming into signpost, it was spluttering. I'm like, fuck me. I'm not pushing this kind of a line. I'm, I'm knackered in the face to get a windy as hell on it. So I like I coasted on that line with my clutch and I'm probably not like eighty mile an hour. Um <laughs> Got it and, done. Got yeah. it done. And then, uh, and then we were at the time. I think 18th or 19th in the senior. And then I'd been for my my first, oh, for my first pit stop. And the, the lad doing the fuel cap, it wasn't his fault at all. He put the cap on, he clicked. I saw it click, and then he pulled it to make sure it was on. It pulled straight out. So I, then I put it on and clicked. And I was set off because I thought, well, he maybe did it wrong first time. Anyway, uh, got coming, in, just coming like over there. I don't know what the crest is called before Balagheri. Before you drop down and go around Balagheri. I felt something hit my leg, so I looked down as my fuel cap there. Oh, and I looked no. at my fuel tank and it's just like obviously like vacuuming out all over me, all of my leg. I'm like, fuck it, bike's gonna be on fire in a minute. Fuck me. So I just like pulled as left as hard as I could, got onto like the outside of the apex on Balagheri, tried to get my fuel cap, and then that drops off my leg and ran out into the middle of the road. <laughs> so I just threw my bike against Bale and I, f- I didn't really look to see if there's anyone coming because I thought. <laughs> I'm on the white line. If anyone's on the white line coming through Balagheri, you've there, got it anyway. They, yeah. they, we're both dead anyway, so <laughs> so this should be this should be six foot off me. So I just ran out, grabbed it, and then I went out to look at my fuel tank to put my cap back on. There was like I'd lost like three liters, so I would have had to pit again. So I just and oh, the other mate. the other weird thing that happened was um, after my uh, end can dropped dropped to bits in super stock race, I noticed on the way back the temperature was like really struggling to get below even below hundred. Which I never really thought anything of, and then we t- took fairings off, whatever. Had a bit of a check over that night, and we noticed the um, like the overflow pipe from the radiator to the header tank. That cost it's like a seven-year-old bike. It was all perished and knackered, and it had split. So we put a new one of them on. Never really thought anything of it. Put like a litre of water in. We thought oh, it would be alright. So I think hopefully it'll get on gone. But there's not a lot you can do. So yeah, I just yeah. go out and, and ride, uh, ride all that. Uh, yeah, and then senior went out, and then as I chucked it against the bales to go get my fuel cap, the other thing when I came over to put my fuel cap on and realised all my fuel had gone, it would. Boiling water out 130 degrees. So, we're at the moment, we haven't got into bits yet, but I think the gas is gone as well. Oh, right? So, mate. the fuel cap coming off, you know, rather than it seizing up, or yeah, it's probably saved. Yeah, it's saved probably, you. Yeah, yeah, could yeah. Have done. you could have done. Yeah, it's just a bit of a bubble, but it's how it goes. And it's yeah. a we had a good TT all in, definitely loved it. Good to get 15th in Superbike. I couldn't believe it really. Good when man. I first came in as well, my mate, because the, uh, the uh, internet's pretty shit over there, isn't it? He was like, Oh, you're 28th, you're 28th. I was like, fuck off, 28th in Superbike. I was like, get in there. And then it refreshed you. Like, oh no, it's 15th. I was like, fuck off, no way. I was like, I'm going to get some money. <laughs> the only other time I've won money in racing was at Oliver's Mountain. I got, uh, I got 25 quid for coming sixth in Cock at North Race. Oh, God, so, yeah. do, you get, do you get paid uh, for top 15, is it? Top 20. Top 20. Top 20. Yeah. And is it, how does it work? Is it on laps? Or yeah, yeah. It's, per yeah, laps it's, and it's 20 grand for 20th. And then it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's like 18 summit for 
fin for winning the race, but you get like five or four or five grand each race before that. So if you lead the whole race, you're like, I dread to think you get a lot of money. It's no. like nearly 60 grand <laughs> per race they give away yeah. over the top 20. So you get a good lump each year. It's not bad. It what do you get for 15? <laughs> I got uh, 1100, 1150, I think I got. So hey, that's good enough. That's, uh, yeah, not I mean, you think of like, yeah, you like. It'll pay for head gasket, won't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. And you did the right thing, mind, in my in my opinion. You know what I mean? So, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, let's go through it, son. Let's go through it. So, you unfortunately had a little slip off, didn't you, on the 600? Was that in practice? Yeah, that was practice. That was last, that was, yeah, nailing coffin was that, but that was last lap because we done, yeah, whatever. First night, just on 600. Second night, we did big bike, but yeah, I was just paggered. I just don't have yeah. fitness. I was just doing like first lap because I think you set off a bit ahead of me, didn't you? I think we just overtook you yeah, going yeah. into. That's where Paul John tried to sling it away inside coming yeah, out of Kurt Michael. <laughs> you know, like the first left, the first left, right, left, right coming out yeah, of Kurt Michael. Line, line, the line, yeah, the first bit. left, there's just his R1 right front one guy trying to come inside <laughs> yeah. of me. I was like, oh, don't do that there. But yeah, so then I thought, yeah, like, I've like, never tried that. Yeah, he, he yeah, definitely yeah, I, tried, I watched yeah. him, yeah, because he got past me. Where did he get past? I don't know, top of a garage or something like that. It should just powered past me because I was on BM, but it was like the first lap or whatever, so I was just slow as, yeah, out. But yeah, just followed him for a bit and like say we caught up to you because you were on 600, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, through Kurt Mack. You can see, <laughs> obviously, he was on R1, so he just pulled a massive amount on you, but obviously, you still tried to go for it, didn't you? I was just sat behind going, it's oh, like, this Jesus. is going to get a bit tasty. <laughs> You're like covering the brakes. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's just going to all go up, isn't it? Well, I can't say a lot. I did send to Julian Trimmer up on that one, so <laughs> stood his both foot badly. I said sorry. Yeah, it was, you know, your head's just like, oh, I'll get him there. It was, you know, the first two, the three left, I'm bad with names, first three left after a mile, mile. We we're going in there and it was like breaking, breaking. I was catching, catching, catching. I thought I'll get past him before we tip in. And as I was alongside him, it was like, I was like, oh no. And then I, it was just like, I hope he just sees me before. We collect each other, but he luckily he did. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I, 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 I did. Um, I did. Uh, Brian McCormick and uh, uh, um, put like both feet off going in the schoolhouse. You know, you just regret it. <laughs> <laughs> I just literally pulled out and just went, "Why are my feet off?" <laughs> <laughs> the thing. I'm trying to like put back on up two gears and then tipped it back in. You just think yeah. it's a, it's amazing. Your commitment level yeah. is a switch over you're there, just, isn't yeah, it? You just go like that, going. You just just there's no second guessing. There's no nothing. Yeah. It's go. Do it. Yeah, like, and then as soon as you do it, you're like, oh, no. no <laughs> but you think of it after, though, don't you? Yeah, you, don't yeah, get, yeah. you don't go midway through. You're still throttle wide open going, well, you said you'd do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Class, but no, but like you say, like, and you rightly said it, you know what I mean? There's, there's another year. Yeah, I'll that's it. Yeah, sure. yeah, like I say, we got past you at Belaf, and I was pagged coming in because I like just stuck my leg out to like, oh, yeah, all right, lad. And <laughs> fucking hell, just even trying to get me a la leg back onto the bike was like hard work. Just every time you're going like left, right, I could just feel heart rate getting higher and higher. It's just pure fitness. Like I say, eight weeks ago or nine weeks now, like I say, I struggled to walk upstairs. So oh, it, was, it was always a big push. Mm -hmm. But we did that and like coming over at Mountain Foot, first lap on big bike, I was absolute paggered. I knew enough spewed in my helmet because I was like absolute breathing out my ass. That, that that just shows the character of you even more. It, you've done the right thing by, you know, if you just went, I'm just going to do it for the sake of doing it. Yeah. You've done it the right way. You went, you know what? You, you know what you've been through. There's another year. You've yeah. done the right thing. And you're not just thinking of yourself. You're thinking of others as well. And that that's commendable. And yeah, this next bit, year, so outstanding, mate. Mm, it's a bit, I know we said it about Marcus, didn't we? Me, Marcus had another year off. I bet he'd be right. up. He'd just, been straight back he's forward, a... but he rushed back. Fucked you know, they don't know anything about suspension, but they're comparing themselves to Marcus. Well, no, no, I'm loving it. We don't know about injuries. We know more about injuries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you, are, you are right. And at the moment, at, at, when you're in the moment, as by grace, you're always like yeah. trying to... Uh, even if you it's very difficult to get that right isn't it because yeah, you always yeah. kind of I know, yeah, you, so you can't can, blame yeah. I mean, it's like anybody it's like yeah, yeah you've done it have broken collarbones and been back when I can't even do like a push up in you yeah and, and especially at a, at a professional yeah. level the, everyone's like shitting themselves about somebody else getting on the bike and doing a better yeah. job I look at Mike Brown who did like a 20 what's he doing 23s 24s he only ankles yeah to, to so, like, how do you do that <laughs> the you can't walk the T1000 isn't an Austrian bloke it's a bloke from Cork Island who uh, <laughs> milks cows that, is, that isn't it fuck, that's, yeah. a, that's yeah. a different sure, level his ankles when we were in the Scott Physio and it was like the scar looked like it had been you know the, the operation looked like it had been done a week ago yeah. I think it was about three weeks before that but there's still like you know pink horrible 
you know, it, it, walking up to get his trophies and that, he could like, it was like, just unreal, it? Yeah. Yeah. literally the surgeon said to him, don't worry, you won't break them. That to him was, didn't worry about it. Then, right, it was <laughs> yeah, just, I should have said that. I should have said, just have a, have a two month off, let me look. I tell you, what, what a fella, man. I tell you, you know, it's Isla's last year. Really? Yeah. Oh, never. It's Isla's last year. That. Scott Physio, that's that's oh, that's so the end of it. Gonna do, they're going to get another physio. In, I have, to have do. no idea, but like Isla's been part of the infrastructure yeah. and everything like that. I'm pretty sure if they got all the riders together and we all had a whip round, there'd be a mutiny. We'd be able to pay. Oh, yeah. We'd there'd, all just chuck a few quid in. There'd be a bloody mutiny. Even if man. we all paid fifty quid or whatever, hundred quid each, you'd, it'd be worth it for the help we give you. 100%. All the riders, yeah, yeah. You got know, everyone I'm, involved. I'm not sure. Just what's pay for a physio to be there. I'm not sure what's it. happening. After, you do need 100%, oh. but I don't know. Like, um, no, that's that, that's drawn a line under Isla's chapter. I don't know. Yeah. Like, uh, no, I'll have to. We should have a whip fa- round for them for what they've done as well. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll have to do, uh, before the next pod, I'll definitely have to do more, like, you know, find out the crack from yeah, that yeah, element of it. Out, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and getting to Dom as well, obviously. Uh, the, I know oh, it's like, no, fuck off. He's a real superstar. Hold on, fast. A mullet and Captain Ike Cancer's arse. Let's just change the subject here. Captain Top 10. I don't know. I'll tell you what though I want to discuss one thing like a, a major highlight of the TT and I want to get your grasp on it it's the fact of like the variation in speed this year can you put your finger on it between who well no 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 not, not in, in individuals it's a bit like okay um, Hillier Hutchie McGuinness give me some other rocks they win the 129s 28s mm-hmm. not breaching the 30s when you think yeah, they're yeah. all 132 Hutchie's a 133 man you know what I mean? And yeah, then yeah. you've got like, um, really, there's a handful, like Hickman didn't go any faster. Who else? Dean Harrison was doing, this is scary to say, he's only doing 32, so I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to do a 32. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, but you know what I mean though? He's a 34 man, there was a yeah, change yeah. from him, the Dunlops to Metzlers and everything like that. And there's oh, been The this... weather and race weight was shit though, wasn't it? It was only really the super bike that would have been, other oh, super stock I suppose, but then that was only three laps, so they never really made it, the boys not getting the rhythm. was shit the only top, no, the weather, senior was not, bad. It, it, senior was bad, yeah. but it was, the only top riders that went faster this year were Davy Todd. Yeah. That was a ch- change of machinery as well. That yeah, yeah. Uh, Jamie Card went quick on the six hundred. Right. You know, um Conrad. Connor, Connor one thirty three yeah. on that stocker. That is outstanding. He's going. like fourth quickest man ever on the T V okay, circuit. Yeah, but you see it's it's like you see what I mean? That there's no like a definitive off, yeah. it's not like everyone went slower. Mm. But then you think it's been three years off, but my little attitude was a bit like, Well, you don't forget how you remember to get home, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was lots of differences in the, the circuit, both positive and negative. Yeah, yeah. But like not negative from the organizer's point of view. It was like so be straight. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Webb. I tell you what, I, I've never seen the limit of so much on my bike because the bike was lim- oh, yeah, like, yeah. literally both tyres were coming off the ground. Yeah. They were saying that's like the root system going through there. It's like, yeah. Ha- yeah, the trees to be fair. Well, you'll know more than me about roots. Oh, crap, bloody Yeah, yeah. they're going to be under there. Fraxius Excelsior's. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry, that was they're so gonna, they're nerdy. Gonna be under, they're going to be under there out there, to be fair. Yeah, 100%. So they're going to be, they're gonna be changing. What are the big changes was there? But you see, like, the, did you feel the jump at Ginger Hall, you yeah, know, opposite the pub? Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, the opposite the telegraph. Paul. First that night. was out of my seat every night there yeah. but I sort of let it you know let it do that and, and then settle again bet you never did that before I did, like, I'm sure no. he hadn't no yeah no, no way on God's green earth um, like and then see the mad thing is there's loads of little references points so got, like I'm, I must tidy this up for political they have done an awesome job with oh, like, yeah. like you know the, the, the safety better. everything's better but there's something a little bit it's a bit it's just changed a lot. It has, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. like you know when We're you're going when you're going down a quarter bridge. Remember the jump that used to go into it. Yeah, yeah. It used to be a break and re- like so. You used to come up to it, hook a gear out, drive yeah. over it, mm. big jump, both wheels off the ground. Certainly, you hit the uh, both wheels on the floor. You'd start hitting the brakes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. First night of practice, I went over it. I shit thee not, I pulled back. <laughs> like that. Where's uh, the jump? Where's yeah, the jump? Yeah, yeah. Not there. That's dead smooth off. Even mm, coming yeah. up the kettle gate, that's dead smooth, but holds a lot of water. There's just. Yeah. Uh, but then but like it goes back to my main point but there wasn't it was it was a weird year well, the biggest change, we- it's probably going to be the biggest change as we ever go through and it'll been off so long yeah it's not going to you know probably well, hopefully never another three years off two years whatever you want to call mm. it but do you know what i mean you know, so it's it's but, the, the but, most time they'll ever have to change that many things you know mm. so it just be a little bit every year from now on like they normally you know like they normally would have mm. three years to do bits and bats and cut loads of trees down. Do you reckon that's what it was, though? I don't know. said no, so. No, they just had so long to look at stuff, aren't oh, yeah. they? Mm-hmm. No, no, I'm not mean on the organisation side of it. I meant, like, as riders kind of thing. Yeah. You know, like, what, what, you know as competitors yourselves, it's a bit like there was such a very small minority, like, that 
yeah, improved. Okay. Not even matched, yeah, yeah. but they, they weren't even matching their times. Yeah, yeah. Someone like Hillier, yes, for example, he's been on Kawasaki's for years and years, hmm. but he's been doing a lot of testing over the last two years on the arms and the beer. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. the man can pedal a bike. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, and he was struggling to do 30s. And you think, that's melted my head. Mm. Think, yeah, I think it was the second or third night of practice. He came down, came past me down Solby. And then Jim Hand was between me and him. And then I couldn't touch him between it there in Ramsey on Thou when he was on 600. And then I got past him coming up on top mountain, maybe up mountain mile somewhere. And then I could eat, I could still see Hillier coming out of Windy Corner as I went into it. Well, not went into it, but the left hander before it. So I was like, I can't be going too badly. But mm. do you know what I mean? So it sort of shows everyone is sort of struggling with it. He should have just been gone. But then like someone like Rutter, you know, Rutter's obviously he's miles off the pace. Yeah. Gone, but for some reason, it's, there's some, obviously something going on there. Quick quick question for you all three. If you had to say who, which rider overachieved at the TT? Overachieved? Rider? Overachieved. Who, who would you pick? It's a tricky one, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> Trev? <laughs> yeah. No, no, you're right. No, you said you. No, you're like he got there. Um, but actually, road, I suppose. Well, rate, finish the race, should I say? He's, he, I, you're tempted to say Todd, but you sort of expected it. Cause, oh, well, he's been going in off west and does BSB and whatnot. Mm. Uh, obviously, Jim was going insanely well. Do you mind? Yeah. Um, nafted well, didn't he? Yeah, nafted really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, was, he did like a twenty-eight or something, didn't he? Yeah, the week, tenth and senior. So, uh, just while you mentioned Todd, for me, Todd was yeah. the sort of unluckiest person. With uh, the engine failures he had, he lost yeah. so much practice. The tire dilla- and then his tire delamination, which, still did what he which did, would have, after the Northwest, which would have melted anybody's head. I don't know uh, about that, yeah. I, I honestly think without the tire, without the engines going pop and the tire delamination, he would have been a lot stronger yeah, over yeah, the weekend. Yeah, but he still, he still did a mega, mega oh, job. Insane, yeah. for, for me, one, one thing that I thought about last night, which I think's mad is do you know if how Michael Dunlop and Hickman were going for that super twin race yeah, yeah. and there was literally nothing in it there was never more than a second right. either way if Michael Dunlop's bike hadn't blew up there and he's let's say he pipped Hickman yeah it would have meant they won three each yeah yeah mm-hmm. Like in my head, I'm Dunlop's thinking like, a lot than I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Hickman's yeah, dominated yeah. because think, it was four and like and yeah. Yeah, But yeah. if if Michael Dunlop had pipped him, which let's, I, I think he probably would have could pushed have easily happened. Yeah, yeah could if, have if, there, if there was plus zero on the last oh, second, yeah. who what who you'd go of, Dunlop who's on a little bike, risk it, yeah. <laughs> on a little bike you'd go I'd, Dunlop. I would have I would have bet Dunlop yeah, on that yeah. one. So if he'd won that, it would have been three each this week, and it it's it kind of looks like it. I know it's big bikes and little bikes, but still a tie, still wins out there. Exactly, and so for me, I think, although obviously you don't, it's yeah expect a lot out of Michael Dunlop yeah, yeah. For, for considering he almost won three won yeah, two yeah. but almost three mm. I, I personally think he was man yeah, of the meeting yeah. I wouldn't uh, if, you would have to say Hickman's man of the meeting just for yeah, yeah. even though you expect it but in yeah. terms of overachieved I he didn't think Michael Dunlop I didn't think Michael Dunlop uh, yeah, was well, going to get that's just yeah. ridiculous on a 600 to do that speed it's absolute yeah. bonkers oh, isn't it but yeah, it is how the it. hell he does it well, I think like I say everybody just focuses on the fact that it's a big bike and it's a but then again, Hickey rides that in week in, week out. It's That's his nature, isn't it? Yeah. Is, Did you hear Hitman's bike? It sounded totally uh, yeah. different. It does oh, sound different, doesn't it? So, What's all that it about? Was, it was meant to no, no, different know, work to, of art, like... Right? No, no, to like his BSB bikes, it's a total different. Yeah, if, you, if, if you could make a soundtrack solely on oh, that yeah, bike, you, get, you know, when like a police line up, you yeah. count which bikes had Hickman's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you so know. distinctive. Yeah. I didn't have to look at it to know it was Hickey. It was no, you can hear it. It sounded amazing. Absolutely amazing. But no, like I didn't, it, I didn't notice that to be fair. Is it not? Yeah, it definitely sounds yeah, different. Yeah. Well, it had his pops and bangs you, you, that you'll hear it. Just, Oh, yeah. God, it was totally different. Which just, yeah. They've it's got um, uh, Peter Clifford's on the electronics, I'm sure. They're, yeah. This, do you know what? There's so much you can do with a BMW, even the standard stuff. Like in, it's literally unbelievable what you yeah. can, if you know. If you know what you're doing. If you yeah. know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was like, did you know, the a few years ago when I raced in Superstock on that, yeah. the if if you had like a full time person from say if you paid someone from like Alpha to be there yeah, or whatever yeah. you could in with super stock rules you could have the bike basically mapped for every corner we used like yeah. Yeah. and like all so we never used that because yeah, yeah. we didn't have the expertise to do yeah, it yeah. but if you did within the rules you could have like oh, it's, it's just mega like stuff like that in it yeah. yeah so it's a stock bike oh it's a bit a stock is a bit of a not a joke but it's a stock. Very, yeah, exactly. It's it's not, not, not what it's supposed now, to be. It? Yeah, well, yeah. I don't know. For not me, what it's designed to it's be. Very, well, it's full Motec, isn't it? Is them things, which is I know it's a bit different software, is it to BSB, but 
Uh-huh. It's... And speaking speaking of um, sort of uh, impressive, very impressive performances of the week. I know Dom hates talking about himself, but uh, <laughs> with, a, with five top ten finishes and then just slipping Insane, off in the senior out of eighth, he was up sixth on oh. lap one. But uh, yeah, he had a tenth in the first one, then a ninth, and then eighth, eighth, eighth. <laughs> For a midget with one eye, he's done very well. Right, well. <laughs> what, what did that guy tweet? You about? <laughs> What did that guy tweet the you about? Dwarf with one eye. No, the, 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 uh, the dry, well, it was something to do with wang eye or dry eye. Or something. Dry eye or wang eye, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> but um, I, oh, I mean, go, like, are you happy with how your TT went? Are you pleased with you your must just, be. Yeah, you could just... Yeah, can we talk about something else? <laughs> go on, go on. No, no, he has done people, well, yeah. people really well. want to hear from you. Like, I've had no, so I just... many messages and that. So, like, you may as well. You may as well. <laughs> when you look at the factory, the big factory names and stuff, he's beaten. Yeah, and he's yeah. still in a relatively smallish team. You know, it's yeah, not. Private, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, there's not. He's not got a million quid behind him like a lot of them have. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So he's done unbelievably well. Yeah. Yeah. Every single race, if you look, every single person ahead is like a proper yeah. established yeah, yeah, yeah. team, and there's and in lots of the races, you had some good established people behind you as well. Um, yeah, you must. I'm, must, def- I'm definitely must the only that. Elvis in there, the top ten. <laughs> Elvis gone. Never been to Spain. <laughs> <laughs> Please exactly. tell me you've heard that. Never been to Spain by Elvis. Get an education, <laughs> yeah, lads. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's lost an outstanding song. Lost on, lost on, lost on, on, on. Oh, I'm telling you, but, uh, never yeah, been to Spain. Happy, happy with it? <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's... um, Yeah. It, it, I just... It's mad, isn't it? You, you, we all do it. You come back, you look at how you've ridden and stuff like that, and it's just... It's been... It's definitely highlighted the enigma that is the Isle of Man. It's just... <sighs> You push, you don't get a time, do you? But then how do you push for not pushing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's mental, isn't it? Yeah. It's mental. Everyone says, oh, relax and enjoy it and stuff like that. Of course, you're there to enjoy it, but then you, you're there to push. But then if you push, the crash. time is shit. <laughs> yeah. you crash. But then, not only you crack, well, yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah. But like, um, it melts your head, man. Absolutely yeah, yeah. melts your head. Talk us through. Melts your head. Talk us through the senior. Obviously, um, everyone I watched, fucked up. Yeah, Next everyone, chapter. Ever, <laughs> everyone was uh, like worried for a, for a good while, and like the at the time as a spectator, you you obviously lose you from the timing sheet, and then you knew there was a helicopter landing, and you, it's like very difficult to get updates like quickly. Yeah. Um, what what exactly happened? And um, well, it went off lap one. And then, like, saw P6, and even I went, I've got no business being up here in P6. <laughs> like, that was a bit of a, like, what the fuck am I looking up here? But, um, no, it was it was all feeling good, you know, two fantastic pit stops, and it was just getting worse and worse and worse in the conditions. Like, one of my mates was, like, uh, the Blue Steel. He was down, like, watching it, the Black Dub. Mm-hmm. Have you ever actually been down there? No, I've not so watched no, 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 I've never been to watch, but even go down the pub set up by Ugly and Co. It's absolutely awesome. It's mm-hmm. min crack down there. But like they were like struggling to hold on to the barriers and like that was rough. It was rough, wasn't it? Even on the bottom. But like yeah. um, Sweeney Sweeney crashed mm. in a practice, second right. night of practice. What what's all that about? And you know when you hear little stories about, you know, like people getting pushed off by the wind, you think, all right. All right, you know, you you've got to be a a, b- a believer to see it kind yeah, of thing yeah. you know what I mean mm-hmm. and then um, no came came on the fifth lap and you know yourself lads you know what like six laps it's more daunting doing the six laps rather than the, sp- the speed yeah yeah you know it yourself you know yeah, what I mean just... it's like it's it's mental isn't it and you just think right you've just got to get to the end on that and like we did like fifth lap came through and like well sorry I went from six I caught Sam West in the first lap and then I caught Crowey in the first lap and then I went down and then I saw Gary Johnson he held us up for a bit and then when after that then I saw Michael Rutter never in my career would ever <laughs> thought I'd be <laughs> shouting at Michael Rutter going up with fucking way it was pretty cool that you know what I mean and then and then Karma came and bit me in the ass <laughs> didn't I got a bit cocky and shh, there goes the pop balloon <laughs> what, so in terms of I know obviously where you crashed but did, was, was, did you get a gust of wind under the front? so well, no, no to be honest it was, it was weird it? it was weird it was just like I went through Glen Lake so Black Dub came through Black Dub and then you've got Glen Helen 1 and 2 as yeah. I call it so Glen Helen 1 doesn't matter what bike you're on you hold it nailed through but then it drifts you out really nice and wide but then like the valley opens up a bit before Sarah's and the wind's like gushing like good like and I had no warning from prior and if anything fifth lap full of fuel I try and treat it a little bit lazier you know what I mean don't push the front too much leave it for the next lap because sixth lap that's your only rolling lap of the pit like race and you think right that's the time that's where I'm going to get it from went in knocked the power off bang on line no problem whatsoever. Fed the power back on and I just, feeding the power on, just felt the front lift. Not in a wheelie. But it wasn't, 
I'm not one of them riders that try and rubs hedges or nothing like that. And I just went, all right, yep, no problem. Just knocked the power off, sat it up. It was enough, I hit my arm off the wall on the right, you know, that kink right. right yeah. But it was just enough. I think, nah, you know, when you say this, I've hit, I've hit walls before and stuff like that, can not you? <laughs> no, you, you know what, like, my road races, yeah, yeah, for yeah. God's sake, you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> you, you glance things and you know what I mean? You hit another ride and it kind of upsets you. And I'm just going like, just came in, just the front lifted, came back down, went, ah, it's no problem, just hit the wall and the last thing I remember was going hmm <laughs> and oh, then I, I, yeah just so was it the wall that kind of knocked it, you yeah, off yeah it's, it's, I think it was like the last thing I remember was hit me arm off the wall and you know when the front's just like next to yeah. you and I'm going hmm. can't remember anything after that can't remember getting I think the last thing I remember was uh, Jim Hunter's face before the air ambulance <laughs> Could have given him a shout out actually <laughs> the Jim Hunter I'm travelling marshal uh, so from the Hillwood Centre but no bar that I can't remember getting in the hospital, no nothing. It was like um knocked out. Totally, totally sparkled. But apparently I was conscious on the, it's I hate them crashes, don't you? You know, when you're like everyone says, Oh, you were conscious and so I can't remember zip. Yeah. But RS the RST and the RI helmet did a job. You know, when you come in going, Oh, wait, I would have kept my head up. We've had a the, bruises to be fair, you'd say you've got two broken bones. Wait, it's, uh, uh, oh yeah. It protected you fairly well. Uh, yeah, no, it did it did a hell of a job. So what, I broke run through yeah, run through Um so I've broken my scapula. So it's like a little like um, a little T like on the x-ray it looked like a little bit of t-bone so the, the one that runs laterally with your rib cage i broke that clean in half and then <laughs> backside and like the towards the back of my pelvis i've broken only a small part of that but it's like um i, I broke that clean in half but it hasn't moved so I, like I, I can load like you know not like tim tim neve if he's listening to this we're going what a bell and i've actually broke me that is yeah, a proper yeah. break you know <laughs> yeah. the, i didn't need any surgery any intervention you know so it was like they said for me to break them bones it must be a high high paced crash you know but you lads know you know the isle of man you come off around there it's uh yeah it, it's on, fast was, it's yeah. a fast period you was know much damage to the bike <laughs> well put it th- put, put it this way i haven't actually seen it yet it's so, all like uh, yeah, I'm shitting myself, you know, because obviously that's a bike that I bought with there's me no mate. Soft, there's no soft bits around that. There is no uh, soft. There, there, there was no marshmallow cliffs. section, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it's, uh, um, well, I haven't been it because I can't raise this right arm properly. Mate, I'm a right softy sitting across from him, you know what I mean? I've got nothing. I've, I've <laughs> got nothing to live in. Yeah. I've got a little poor arm. Oh, bless him. <laughs> like, oh, but uh, no, like, um, so I, I'm yet to unload the van, but I'm, I'm generally shit myself to get on the bench but i'm gonna have to go well we've all been there we've all been there you know so i'm gonna have to get it out take you know take the forks out take them to care tech make sure the frame's straight and all that but it's it's only money yeah so it is and that's all that's a lovely word we could set up a religion called it's only money us races we do anyway but even spend even more i know it's mental isn't it but no but no i'm i'm um you know like I was to get up in the top six and you know and finish seventh would have been nice to break the eighth you know but it's uh, no I'm already looking for because you know typically that's well you know your section like that section lads it's lush isn't it you know what I mean for me that was one of the hardest bits to learn through there Mm. Uh, just because it just all looks very similar, doesn't it, for me? Mm. So it was pretty hard for me to learn. Mm. From that. I'm looking forward to getting back to the classic just to get all you know, uh, that yeah. I really want to get there. And are, mm. are you allowed to do the classic? Is that no, a I'm, I'm, I'll be over to watch Max thinks well, Dave Ridby that helped me spanner. Yeah, um, he's going to be he's going to be racing it fingers crossed. So I'll be helping him, I'll be in pitch for him. Mm. So I'll be Mid. I, know, I know it's kind of difficult for you to uh, talk about it yourself, but in, in all fairness, <laughs> you, um, into, uh, you. Psst, in terms of the super sport and the <coughs> super twin, the, uh, you would like quite far down in top speed on both bikes. And um, given, I think, if you had to sort of say like your best class running into the going into the TT was probably the super twin, mm. and uh, unfortunately losing an engine early on and then having loads of sort of mechanical gremlins. Although eighth is still of an excellent result at the TT, I I think everyone is aware that if you if well, we're 20 miles an hour down the speed yeah. track. Oh. Put it this way, Dunlop owes me a paint job because he took the paint <laughs> off my bike when he went. But I'll tell you what, the fact that that bike made the grid was phenomenal. That's good. You know what I mean? The fact that... The, Thanks to your mate, Neil. Uh, what, the fa- all of them, even Sugar Tits the was involved, was man. He, yeah? They were up all <laughs> night and like, oh, mate, they were like, well, you met him? He was yeah, out there yeah, with the flip-flops. Looks it looks like he's been robbing a place. That's, that's <laughs> it. Same in Super Sport, though, as well. You were like quite far down on that. 12, 12 mile an hour down the speed track. Yeah, little bikes make a massive difference, doesn't it? Because you just flat out your car. For those, can, for those that know and like for those that are like actually looking at but a lot of people will just see the <laughs> the results and um it sort of makes it more impressive when you're on riding like a much slower oh, bike yeah, yeah. <laughs> i will just um 
uh, I think at some point in the podcast we've got to mention the the Fallen Riders this, this yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's been a, a, a bad year in terms of yeah. number of deaths, uh, and uh, you'll have all seen it. But like, the, there was a nice sort of graphic made, yeah, made right, so. and uh, I'll just read it out. It says, "Measure life by its breadth, not length." Uh, five men who absolutely lived their lives to the fullest, pursuing a common dream and doing what made them feel most alive. And we've got Davy Morgan, 52 from Northern Ireland. We've got is it Caesar Chanel. Is it, do you pronounce it Chanel? Chanel. Oh, sure, to be honest, it's Chanel. Yeah. Yeah, I'm my French pronunciation. He, 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 all of us are going to do a bad job of it. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I mean, I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, teacher, you stand a better chance. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. But, um, 39 year old from Lyon in yeah. France. And uh, particularly tragic, Roger Stockton and Bradley Stockton, the father and son on the, on the yeah. side cars, uh, yeah. 56 and 21. Uh, yeah, tragically. And I'll tell you what, was Mark, such. Sorry, and Mark Perslow, 29 from Wales. I tell you what, you know, when the la- lads went up on the stage, they just like for the prize yeah, presentation, the, yeah, they, you know, just went up like the site. It just shows, really, really, yeah. just shows everything, doesn't it? You know yeah. what I mean? The fact that they, they all went on stage and he thought, "Fucking fair, fox man." Yeah. And if yeah, obviously there will be friends and family of all all of the competitors that will probably listen to this and the, the hell that they'll be going through right now. Yeah. There's yeah. like nothing that we can obviously say, but um, yeah, we're thinking of you. Yeah, yeah, well, definitely, I. I say. Yeah, definitely. Did what they loved, didn't they? That was it. Which is, it's, mm. not, it's not really. It, it was, um, no, no, and also the sorry, no. make it very tragic that both side coincidents happened at exactly, exactly the same yeah, place. It was like it, precise, like the um, it was odd, you know, like there's not really been any sort of big crashes at Agos Leap for years, no, no. Yeah. and for two for, for two fatal incidents to be like at the same place, same yeah. class, same wall, uh, was yeah, very very yeah. odd. Um, but yeah, very sad. But like, like Matt was saying, like you know, the good thing is every year that you know they readdress and the, they take all these things extremely seriously, and yeah, they'll yeah. just be readdressed and go from there, won't it? So definitely. Yeah. We, so, what, so what's what's what are the before the Patreon question? Is that what you're lining up here? So Chris is going to roll through the Patreon questions here. So it's a bit like what what is what is the future holding? Bar bed. <laughs> He's like, I want to go to bed. I want to go to bed. Good lad. Yeah, seriously, yet again, lads. Thank you so much for coming up. No problem. I'm so sorry about my shared geography. But seriously, what what's the rest of the year plan? You were talking uh, about 24. I'm right? going to do 24 in a couple of weeks. Yeah, go do Mixed. that. Last year I was all paid up and ready to go, and then uh, I had to do a COVID test and whatever. So I got an email through at half four in the morning before my flight that I had COVID. I tested <sighs> positive. So I couldn't go do it. So I got all my money back and whatnot, but it's just a bit gutting. Gutting for them as well. They had to find another ride and a lot of more stress when they've got enough to deal with. So yeah. So fingers crossed we'll get over for that this year. It's a couple of weeks from now. Class. Uh, I bumped into Bill Kennedy at, my, at TT and he's given me a, sort of me an entry for that. So fingers crossed we'll get over for that. And uh, Oh, that's yeah, a proper road fun. race for you. <laughs> but with, with the BM being uh, knackered at the moment, it's probably just going to be on 600, but obviously yeah. I can put my in cell class as well. So I, it's maybe a better bike to take, to be fair. I yeah. couldn't agree more. Honestly, yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of them tracks that you can get a similar time on it. You yeah, know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. You, you can you can easily qualify. Well, yeah, not, yeah. not easily. Sorry, the competitions yeah, yeah. are heavy, but you can you can qualify for the role. You know what I mean? On a 600. So it's absolutely class. How are then, son? What's the plan? What right. are the plans? Because uh, the mad thing is, we still have to actually think about the rest of the season to get signatures for next year. Well, it's, it's been that way, but uh, for me, I don't know. Recover for now. Yeah. Just, yeah, set me ass, get a mountain bike, and I think go mountain biking. Yeah. Uh, but racing-wise, I'd say see what happens with Manx, because, again, I don't have a clue whether I'll even be allowed. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because, like I said, I've done TT, or I've practised at TT. And, again, I don't know whether my fitness, because it's only 10 week, which is... Well, you both know fitness just takes time, doesn't it? It's well, it, you're not going to get it overnight. So, but at the end of the day, lads, you're both hundred oh, comfortably over 120 mile an hour, lads. You know, it's a bit like would you, would you interest in classics? He's just finding someone that's got one that don't want to charge his fucking seven grand to ride it. Do you know what I mean? No, no, it's but, like, see, no but there's lads out there looking. There's always yeah, listeners yeah. to oh, this. You know what I mean? It's, like, go. it's, got to be, jockeys, you know? it's got to be someone that you, you sort of, not that you know, but you've got to be able to trust them as well. You don't want to be turning yeah. up and then they've got something that just chucked together a week before in a shed. Yeah. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? You've got to, oh, at totally the end understand. of the day, it's your life you're sort of putting at risk and Definitely. maybe it might be free, but if yeah. it's a sack of shit, then. But you know what I mean. Mm. I'm not that any of them are, but you never know, do you? But would you anything be, could turn up. Would you be open for that? Though, uh, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Definitely. So it's yeah, a bit well, like, like, say if Manx doesn't work, be, and then yeah, and mm. a lot because yeah, again, I know mountain what, courses, mountain course, and it's 
That's it, isn't it? We'll do that. We'll try and get a few laps and laps, aren't we? Yeah. And without skipping to the end before the pit, I'm not skipping to the end. Trust us. But if people, if you like, obviously you're interested in doing that. What's the best way of people getting in contact with you? Shout out your handles. I know you just said you're shit. I'm shit at social media, yeah, so there you are. We're bullshitting it. But give it, give us a shout out for how we get in touch with you for that. Then I don't know, it's just Facebook or Instagram, isn't it? Which is just I don't know, Stephen Parsons. That's with P H. Yeah, P H. P H. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we call it, Trev. <laughs> yeah, Trev. Well. Uh, AKA Trev, I think the yeah. racing one, isn't it? Well, I Steve think Bassett, so, yeah. Trev, uh, my Instagram's yeah. Matt Stevenson Racing 164, and I think my Facebook's very similar as well. Awesome. I'm awesome. a normal Facebook, Matt Stevenson. Yeah. Right. Now I've got uh, yeah, a WhatsApp message from one of the patrons, Andy Burgess from St. Helens. Uh, well Matt. done on your heroics at the TT Dom. Shame you were having a waz when the telly wanted an interview. Were you aware of that? <laughs> or shit myself or like, like. <laughs> Do you have a, um, a, when you need the toilet, you just go, is there like portal loose? There's like, like two, like, oh, they've got four this year. They've obviously heard me <laughs> yeah. win about it many a time you don't There's, normally only have two don't they we've got kind of few bit on questions to get through like so we'll maybe have to go pick go some, go pick go, some go, of the go, best go. Uh, Ty Kinton first off hope Dom is okay after scaring us with his crash who is this year's TT went under the radar with their performance and should get more credit for what they achieved so like who who went under um, under the radar I probably said Jim Jim yeah, 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 Hines yeah, 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 you don't see much about him on social media. No, so he, well, I don't, how, how one, he yeah, I don't think I've heard one. Yeah, I don't think I've heard one thing You know what? We talked about him, the T1000, Mike Brown. Oh, well. You, yeah. you know, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, well, I think, you know, yeah. what, I like, well, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? It's like, I just think he just... Yeah, what, yeah. What, he's been that, able to walk and still doing that around there. I would say that. track is just... Quick through my manure legs. And you know, the thing is, just the shout out to the whole Burroughs team, you know, and the fact that they just, you know, Mike said, look, I'm going for it. And the fact that a lot of teams wouldn't have wouldn't have rode with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The fact that they've all stuck in with him uh, yeah, and that's what Roy did. listen to Ryder and that, don't they? It's, like I <laughs> say, he not runs the team, but yeah, that's he does it. that and they obviously support him, which is, that's what you yeah, want yeah. in it from a team. That's perfect. That's... And it just shows like what that, what they're going to be capable of in the future. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's going to be upsetting really because we've got to compete against them. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, we should have just we should have just punched him yeah. right in the face right just, there just and then went, take his legs out. Bit... <laughs> you don't need them ankles <laughs> evidently. Just when, just when old times are looking like the slowing down of it there's a lot of young lads and they're always is. Yeah. Always safe. It's Got a question it. from uh, Tony Rolls. Firstly big well done Trev for making it there. The, uh, there seem to be a lot, a lot more mechanical retirements than normal. Any ideas why? Mm. Now first of all in the scene I think there was a lot of people that uh, were having problems with the wind and just were pulled in. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a few, quite a few. I think uh, Gaz Johnson came in. Uh, who else? Paul Jordan did the same. Josh, day, Josh like, Daly did yeah, it. Yeah, and it's one of them where it's if you have a few scares, it's probably yeah, it's it's safer just to pull in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things. If you're not enjoying it. In terms of mechanicals during the week, did you think it was more than usual? For me, there was, yeah. <laughs> Any reason? <laughs> uh, like the, the rivets dropping out of the exhaust were just, you know. I thought you'd just have a drop with that thing. No, I, <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that to my bike. Anyone else's bike. So, he also said, who or what is going to really challenge Hickman on the big bikes? Great question. For the time being. Dom. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up, man. Uh, for, the, for the time being, I can't, I can't see anyone, but I do think if there is going to be someone that rises, I do think in the next couple of years, I think Davey's probably yeah, going to stop in the hands. next. Yeah. But I, I, Three I mean, years Dean, from now, Dean's still snapping his heels and he's not a million still... miles off. Yeah. Yeah. He's always there or thereabouts. Yeah. Well, he is. For the future, probably, like I say. Well, it's a 16 seconds, isn't it? If get a decent ride in BSB, I think he'll be the one lot because, again, He's come on leaps and bounds. I think that's just with being in pageants and mm. doing super stock in it. I don't know. Just looking from outside. Yeah. That's what I'd say, which is... I am so sorry if this appeared on question, but I'm nicking it. Quick, quick fire question. If you're going to pick one team to ride for in the paddock, any team, who would it be? Go. Probably Gas Monkey, wouldn't it? Just because they've got... Bitching they've logo. Got everything, haven't they? Do you know what I mean? Like you walk Texans, past their place. Texans, like, <laughs> Yeah. Even like compared to Taz or what you walk past Taz, it's like obviously they've still got... Couple of million quids of a tackle there, and then you walk past theirs, and it's like, Jesus Christ. Well, you know, there's just nothing they haven't got. So, imagine. matter corporate hope, right? Yeah. <laughs> Probably yeah, pageants. Pageants, yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah, that'd be your next one, like the just that, next think, experience. Well, a fire blade, the new fire blade's unreal, and I don't know if they've written it, but it looks from the outside. Is that a know. hint? Good man. Good man. But yeah, I just, Clive knows how to put back together, oh, doesn't God, he? I... Go on. Sorry, and what's, ne- what's yours? Next question. <laughs> Hold on, I'm a, I'm a host. I, I asked the questions here. 
Captain Racing. Captain Racing. Oh, yeah, smoothie. Yeah. Yeah. Smoothie. I'll tell you what, if there's anyone out there that wants to give us a pattern, uh, yeah. I take you can't. You, How much I, are them? They're like sixty grand out there. Forty grand. Forty. I was actually oh, thinking. Do you know what? When I was watching the racing, I was thinking. I wonder if there's anybody that or, or, or that, would, that would buy like a chasing the racing pattern and put you on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do you think you've got a chance? Yeah, of, like, oh, definitely. Yeah, 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 definitely. I definitely win on that. I'm I'm being serious. If there's anyone out there that like <laughs> do <laughs> a, a smooth forty grand hand, <laughs> but if they want to buy a pattern, there was not a better team out there than the accountants to run it. <laughs> and you can't buy what they've got. Sheer utter grit. The style that is there's probably a, a few people out there that just have them sat in their house. To be fair, a, like a I was going to say, I don't, I don't think they'll just be sat there doing now. They won't really devalue that much no, unless no, no. if but you there's don't no crash them. But there's yeah, no, that kind the, of bike, collector's sorry, bike as well out there, as well as a race bike. There's no second-hand market for them. You never ever see a pattern. No, on no, there's yeah, there's no, no. So if anyone bought that, like, we're going to talk someone into doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully someone's too busy. someone sat there in the living room now looking at it, thinking, it's going to sit there and do now. Well, no, Might but well let Dom crash it. But that's it. Damn right, get handed over. No, yeah, but, yeah. no, but you know what I mean, though. Imagine like just going right there. You go. Yeah, yeah. Off you go. So that would be that. There is not a better team than the Cowboys yeah, yeah. to do it. No, no, no. You know, that, like they have just got utter grit. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. So um, they are. Uh, Jimmy Williams, good question. What makes Hickey so good? Is it the bike? Is it him or both? And a bigger budget than any other team? Say someone else. Well done, Tom, on your awesome <laughs> results. And it was awesome to meet you both, but even better to meet Piggy. Would also like would also like to join Dom's one thirty club. Thanks for the awesome podcast. Spot on. Um, for me, Hickman. I think Hickman's got the highest skill level. To be honest, yeah. So I think, re- regardless. He got to where he was, then that got them the support. But yeah, I think yeah. if you put every single person on the TT on sta- all standard of any bike, I think Hickman would win. I yeah. think he's the best rider on Three the Three years from now, team. Glenn Irwin will push Hickman for a win. I agree. I it's, yeah, it's him or Davey in it that's going to be the no, next uh, starter. Yeah, 100% Davey's going to be there. Yeah, yeah. 100%. You know, I think that, like that, but I genuinely believe Glenn Irwin will push Hickman, will win a senior. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quite possibly, yeah. isn't it? But, you know what I mean? Right? Yeah. What's it done? Did he do? Tw- what did he do? Twenty nine. Did he do twenty nine? Yeah. I've got to say, I'd, going into the <laughs> going into the TT, you know, it's one of them where I think it's re- it's a careful balance, especially doing the say like the podcast because you want to kind of give your opinions on the sport and kind of yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. it. But at the same time, when we're talking, I'm always thinking I don't. I would hate to be sort of put, undermined put, or like put yeah, pressure, yeah, yeah. putting pressure on uh, riders that they definitely don't need. So in my head, if if before the TT, if you had to put a, a secret bet on what um, what Glenn was going to do, in my head, I had 131 in my head. Right. And it was really interesting because he got interviewed afterwards and he said how disappointed he was with the, his first year right. of the yeah, TT yeah, like and how really? he fully expected to do 131, and it, which is exactly what I thought, but I didn't, I, I didn't want to say it because I yeah, think... Yeah. That, uh, even during practice week, I think it's um, Dave will mentioned on the podcast, like always talking about like p- making a big thing, especially for newcomers about what they're up to. I th- uh, it's almost like added pressure that they definitely don't need. Yeah. I personally think Glenn did a fantastic job. Oh, and a, a, one race. Obviously fastest. He had one race. Yeah, fastest mm. ever newcomer and uh, he looked really safe. He, d- he did exactly what I think you, if yeah. you were Glenn, if you were in Glenn's family or whatever, that's what you'd want. <laughs> nice and safe, <laughs> like learning his craft. But um, yeah. yeah, he did. Um, He's not a daft lad, as he knows. Yeah. No, I, I heard him say it on the radio. He said he, he, said he, he thought he was going to do a lot a lot right. more this year um, but, but yeah it's a hell of a task to take on isn't it <laughs> Good, yeah, <nah. laughs> oh, wow. without um, a doubt without a doubt did you lads get ill uh, there was a proper flu bomb around oh, again, I got it? it I got it on the light I felt all shivery cold on ferry on way back so it landed perfectly you, you got it right it been 20 hours so. before I'd have been for a senior I Dave Jackson was in he was in like the uh, part firm before I went out and he was stood talking to me and he was just shivering you know, just cold sweats before I went out for senior. I missed two nights so practicing. Ill, I'll probably start it. There you go. There's, <laughs> there's fresh off the room. I missed two nights. First night I pulled in at Kermite. The second night when I just kept throwing up my lid. Really? You know what I mean? Just pulled, missed two nights yeah, of practice. I've been rough, uh, rough since then, like. <laughs> no, not so good. Not so good. Go on, next patron. Next patron. He's, he's, it's he's a good. long question from Jesse Jesse Mortman. He's congratulating on you. How are you doing? But he said, of all the changes that the TT have made, is there were you in favour of them all? Is there anything you would change? Yeah, yeah. All so far, so good, really. It's not How do you think warm-up lap? Uh, I didn't bother with any of them. No. no right. Well, obviously, I didn't, but 
I don't know. That's about the only thing that's a bit. I don't did know he, whether it's he's, he's it good if you've got a bike. If you've got, say, you go, he's the one lap before the super bike race or whatever, and you're 600, you've changed a lot. It'd be good to just do a lap. And it's yeah. a good idea I if you need it, but if you don't need it, it then. It was so difficult, wasn't it? The fact that they were like, because, you know, they tightened up timetable, they were getting rid of the warm up lap yeah. and putting it back after. And I'll tell you what, what a difficult. You know, it, it's always easy to have a go at the organisers, but you would not yeah. want to be. You would, no, no, no. Imagine sat on that Riding, table riding the bike's the easy bit. It is, isn't it? Yeah, Gary's but, job is just. Pff, no. Gary, the Philip, yeah, yeah. The, the, everyone, lot, lot of them, the, yeah, lot of all them. of them sitting there, and you think it wouldn't, it, it's so easy to sit I'll stick there. To ride it, bike, that's easy. Well, that's it, though, isn't it? But, but I think, you know, the warm up, like, you know, you see, they had the practice after and then everything like that, you know, and it, it'll be, it will be interesting if that changes. Yeah, still. Because I, I personally felt like I, I did one warm up for the sole reason of thinking I need to change something before the season. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, thank God there's a warm up lap. Yeah, yeah. But I felt weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, as a on a personal note, you know, not putting anything in anyone else, but I remember going off the go going, go fast, but not too fast. You've got to race this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So a little then, bit, and then you don't it's I don't know, it's all right for big teams, isn't it? But again, what happens if you broke a bike? But then in the same yeah. breath, you know, the tension element, because you haven't got time to bring your bike back round, yeah. but if they had the you know, if they had the normal practice after, yeah. everyone's more relaxed. Yeah, I was saying that's it. You've yeah. done your racing, haven't you? And then you just Yeah, maybe you have to do the practice after. But then but, obviously if it's the bike you want to race and you're a bit do you know what I mean? If you've, you've got, got a night to fix it, though, you know, yeah. if they put the, if they did the practice after, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? You've yeah, got yeah, time you did, to yeah, get yeah. recovered at Makes your own sense. pace, yeah, yeah. come back. Yeah, but yeah. in the sit, things have got to move on, things have got to progress. But I think the war, the warm lap's almost the, the wrong title for it. <laughs> but it was, it, it's, it was different. It was yeah, definitely yeah. different. And but, it was a weird mentality for me to go into that. And I thought, well, mm, I wonder how many people feel this way. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So, well, <laughs> what do you do about pit Discuss. lane on practice? <laughs> <coughs> you like that or not? I, didn't I, like, didn't, I didn't like it. I did but, not like the single file thing. I, well, I didn't mind single file, but I mean, going down pit lane mm. and then going out. Yeah, like, that melted a few heads, didn't it? Things, it melted my head as well. was talking to us, wasn't he? And yeah, he yeah. said he fucking he had to uncur on properly because someone was coming out of pit lane and he wanted to go back in. And obviously, you don't see him until they're out of pit lane. Yeah. yeah. So he was storming in, still doing 100 and whatever. And they were going out and he said, Yeah, you almost. Because he didn't like it, did he? Yeah, yeah. But... Worked well for me on one lap. Lee Johnson pulled right in front of me on a little 600 and I was on Thou, so <laughs> it took, any... took me all my it's just power can... in my head not to overtake him, but I followed him and is did my any... fastest lap I'd done at that point, I'm just following him on his little six, yeah. There you are. Oh, there... you can pedal so a bike. Yeah, yeah. Is there any sort of like survey or anything that comes right after a TT to give your riders no, no, no. like safety and stuff like that? Maybe that would be a good... They did, they did like a lot of, um, uh, not for, what does he call it, like a... Uh, Online interview thing, didn't they? Like a bit of a, a Zoom call. Go. That's what yeah. I'm looking for. Did they like a Zoom call with all the riders? Pri- prior they? to the event, yeah, to it? see yeah, if yeah. any ideas or anything anyone needs to put in. Just which a, is a brilliant just, idea, mm. the winner. Just uh, as an idea, I think. Do you know, like, say, if the TT organisers sent out all riders like a questionnaire, which like it'd be a good idea f- f- for you to highlight any potential problems, yeah, yeah. any uh, if any close calls that you had, and then they could look and yeah, see yeah. if there's any like sort of running themes, any corners you thought were particularly yeah. bad, stuff like that, and then they could sort of zoom yeah. in and like fix fix the. Um, I, like I, I tell you what the mad thing is you know you talk about like you know short circuits you know like it's such a closed environment you're like I keep I keep humming and hawing about this but my respect goes up and up and up the more I do like go to that event like, you know, it is impossible to keep everyone happy uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, you've yeah, got the never... public road closures nans who think it's too loud you're uh, thinking yeah. this you've got <laughs> riders you've got uh, yeah. oh my god God, it's my yeah, it's a nightmare. Absolute um, nightmare. The, <laughs> last, last few questions. <laughs> which, <laughs> re, really good one there from uh, Ray Carter. It's a long question, but I'll sort of summarise it uh, about the etiquette of when you get when you get a uh, caught on the road. Uh, quite quite a lot of people were talking about it in commentary. Obviously, it's the person that's getting overtaken can get a tow. But uh, he was highlighting that some people it looked like the the they got caught and then they didn't really make it easy for people to get yeah. past. They sort of held them up a little bit or. Is there a sort of an unwritten rule that when you get past, you kind of pull well, to the side? <laughs> Trevor's had a bit of trouble with that, Max, on you. But if I ever hear anyone behind me, and obviously someone that's again your bike and caught up with bike 10 seconds or a lot more, you just. Do you like stick your leg? You just out have, a, have a look, see where they are, and just learn past you. Yeah, because, like you say, you're going to get a couple of corners out of them, just follow them and yeah. see how you go. It just makes sense to me why people don't let people pass or then let them pass, but then because they've got a quicker bike back, back past them again. Yeah. There's a good video that um, uh, Andy from the Manx, he put on. He's I pass him coming over Ren Cullen two on the inside, and then he follows me through Bishop's car, Andy Farrell, uh, through Bishop's car, and you can see his bike's just right up, and then he's just you know he's going like this all the time. He could have easily passed me again, but and then by the time we get to Ginger Hall, I've gone, so, you know, because he could have just kept passing me and holding me up. But yeah, Trevor had a bit of trouble with that, didn't you, Max? Good. <laughs> anyway. 
Really? Uh, Jake, it Jake Knox said, <laughs> he uh, knows who he is. <laughs> if you think Michael Dun- if Michael Dunlop was on a BMW, like say if he was teammates with Hickman this year, do you think you would have challenged Hickman on the big bike? If it's only an identical bike? I don't know really. I'd, I think like I, I wouldn't have said it, the bikes are any any different. Right? Well, you know the ones. I'd definitely rather be on Hickman's than Michael Dunlop. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. But once you get to that level, there, sh- there shouldn't be. But there maybe is a little bit. Yeah, I think you discussed it though. It's like that. That's his. That's his bread and butter. Yeah, I think that's yeah, his yeah. bread and butter. Big bike, 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 super bike, super bike, super bike. When you're doing BSB every single weekend, it's, yeah, it's, it's like, like what's going to take some doing this weekend compared yeah, to what's Dunlop doing. Yeah, like a bit knock what you boys want it, okay? I tell Dunlop to be back in pub or whatever. On a on a total personal note, right? And this isn't. This is not going to get like I'm a huge Hickman fan. Everyone likes Hickman. He's great for the sport. He's absolutely awesome. But it's just nice to have a different winner because it's yeah, actually yeah, it, no no it is no, no, and that's, not, Johnny that's, not, syndrome, isn't it? that's not it is though isn't it yeah, <laughs> you know Marcus, what I mean Marcus as well it's... That, that's it though you, you, like, you well, think it's it's just good like <laughs> the, the, you know you need the David and Goliath stories you need, you yeah, need you the fight the, you everyone need, loves you, an underdog of course it, yeah, but yeah. then it's mad to think you got Dunlop as an underdog you know what, 20, yeah, yeah. What, 21 wins now you think yeah, fuck yeah. it but it's just it's important that there is rivalry it's like you two are the biggest rivalry I know in the paddock you know what I mean for long may that last look at that weekend we had at Dali uh, yeah, that was just oh, a real. We must have passed each other like two or three times a lap. It was just mega that's weekend. First weekend's ra- weekend of racing I've ever had that. It was mega uh, yeah. on it. I would say we could have. Well, we had the pace to win it, but didn't we? But There's we a good picture were... somewhere of going up at start line, and I've just just pipped him to the post. And I'm like that. I'm off back at bike. <laughs> and then someone after was like, "What? You know what happened between you and him? I was yeah, like, what I do you mean? They were like, well, you're effing and blinding him." I said, "Oh no, we're mates. So just messing about." That is oh, class. Single single best moment of the TT. That was uh, sorry. I, I nicked that question from Andy Hosking. <laughs> Like if your personal highlight. Oh God, nah. Go on then. Hand, hand it around the 15th table. Fifteenth in superback, I suppose. Doing the one twenty four. I was happy with that. Um, I don't know. I have a ride in big bike first time, which yeah. I say that's a little experience. Or again, seeing you in fifteenth because that was. I say yeah. I don't think anybody expected that. Did <laughs> like I said, proud not, moment. Yeah, well, just yeah, like I say. I was happy with chuff, thirty. Yeah, I say we chuff it. Well, yeah, just chuff it. You're right. And, yeah. yeah. I don't know what to mix between like you know just getting that counting bike home with missing and banging and all sorts. Yeah. Just you know, just I got on that bike going. I don't care where I finish, I've got to finish it. Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But I think finishing eighth in the stock thousand, yeah, I'm over the moon with that because that, that that's like that's story. like I'll the race that everyone just, finishes. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like no, like you know, you get breakdowns and stuff like that that change it and everything like that. But by your own merit, you know, it's the stock is the stock race, and I'm. <laughs> I just need to try and get seventh next. Yeah. <laughs> it's, never, it's never good enough, is it? It's mad, isn't it? It's mad. Are you friends with Phil Naylor, by the way? Phil Naylor, yeah, it rings a bell, yeah. Yeah. Right, what's he said? He said, is it true, Matt? <laughs> what, what's he said? Yeah, is it true, Matt started racing bikes as it's the only way to get away from all of the women who must be <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of truth in that when they see that haircut (laughs) yeah no that's right (laughs) right and I think that that, I'll just double check but I think that's pretty women hanging off each gun (laughs) yeah I think that does us for all of the Patreon questions so a big thanks to all of them for sending them in Uh, have you got anything to wrap things up it's been Yet emotional. again, honestly, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much because you're over half sitting in the car. I bet it's out there, <laughs> God love it. But honestly, thank you so much for taking the time to come up. And I'm really sorry about the geography skill. I know that's the third time I've apologized no, about it. Yes. I'm going to apologize it again. So, so thank was, you so much. Oh, sorry. Uh, we did get a Patreon uh, <laughs> message the other by Michael Glisson, and he just wanted to say, uh, I just want to mention the TT along with my experiences. Me and my wife went there this year for our honeymoon and had an absolute riot. I would highly recommend the event to anyone. The highlight of our honeymoon was being in the right place at the right time. When you and Lauren went in for food and there was no tables, I think there was two ta- there was two seats and you joined them. And that, for them, they paid for dinner. Yeah, yeah, for them, oh, they, that on their honeymoon that's oh, that's on. that was a highlight for them so yeah cool and, it, uh, and, and I will just give a shout out to another guy when we're in the talk of the town the yeah. guy paid for our uh, paid for a big fan of the podcast and um we had our food when we went up to pay the, someone else had so uh, got the bill so it, yeah. big shout out we didn't catch awesome. his name but big shout out to yeah. him it was very nice the beard him. just want to say <laughs> a quick uh, I've mentioned it on like the last five six podcasts or whatever but um, better to run in a, a track day where me and Dom are going to be at at Cadwell Park tw- Wednesday the 27th of July right. and it's now sold out uh, so thanks to everyone that's uh, booked that and we're looking forward uh, to to seeing them all on track they have uh, just put another one on I presume not with well they haven't asked us to go yet so oh. I, 
I presume it'll be other riders. But yeah, sack the sacklets. Maybe maybe we'll be on this one as well. But there's a new, another one of Brands Hatch, first uh, of August. So if you want to uh, book that, just I want I want to book it. Never mind. I'm yeah, be Michelin, Hatch. Michelin have done a similar thing, but I don't know what day is. I know it's in July at Donington. But yeah, so there's, they've given me an invite for that. So that's uh, bang on for my awesome. And awesome. we've awesome. said uh, your your social tags and everything. Uh, off to by the time this podcast goes out, it'll be after Knock Hill. So really looking forward to round four the BSB and uh, good luck. Yeah, thank good very luck. much. Here we go. Thank you and. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that sort of wraps things up. So, oh, thank uh, 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 all my sponsors. I, I could sit here and rack them all off, but I must say thank you to uh, the EFL lads from God of They they turned up for their first time in there. Uh, Oh God! It was, it was Andy or James. I'm trying to remember from the blur from the head knock, but uh, one of them got a tattoo and might be having a divorce. So it, uh, <laughs> to one of you, good luck. I'm telling you that for a fact. There you go. So it's, uh, no, um, thank you so much, lads. Glad you had a great time. But uh, no, Latin yet again. Thank you so much for taking the time oh, to come up. Thank you very thank much. You so problem, much yeah. Thanks very much, Bye. lads. Massive thanks to our sponsors, Colchester Kazaki, and to all of our patrons. And we'll catch up sometime soon. Take awesome. care. Awesome. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers in the racing. Powered by Colchester Kawasaki, part of the Global Moto Group. We supply new Aprilla, Moto Guzzi, Vespa, Royal Enfield, Kawasaki, Sim, Mutt and Benelli motorcycles.